Hello, everybody, and welcome to Rise of Drekus, Chapter 3, Episode 4, I believe? Solfang. Four. Yeah, it's something like that. 4, 5. 4, four eight. 5, 8, it is 12. Four. Okay. No, it's 4. Come on. How could we know? The wiki's not up to date. It has the link to the blank page. Yeah, uh, but how do we know that's the last episode? No, that's not this week. It has a date on it. <laughs> oh, it does have a date on it. Okay, that's fair. Got him. Yep, can't argue with that. Okay, so without without a wiki here to guide you through this, what happened last week on Rise of Dracus? Uh Well, Marta survived, and we didn't encounter a scary dragon. Now, that was before Halloween. After Halloween, uh, what happened? <laughs> Will? Marta didn't survive, and we met yeah. a scary dragon. Yeah, Marta's dead, and nothing of value was lost. And now the party is in Solfang, <laughs> right? No one, no one misses Mata. They're just a filthy jungle goblin. Yeah, they're yeah, a filthy Mata. jungle goblin that had heels. Right. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> it's a ball and jungle goblin. Yeah. He'll never be forgotten. Yeah, and I couldn't take first aid, so there we go. Mm, We're in the yeah. Elven City now, yeah? We mm -hmm. are yes, in the Elven City of Solfang. The human side of the Elven City. Yes. So it's on yep. two sides of a river. The uh, elven side of the river. Uh, don't go there without without. Yeah, don't authorization. Go there. Yeah, I just, just so I you said Solfang. Yes. So is that the uh, the F now? It's uh you know the elves would call it Solfang. If you talk to the humans, they'll call it Solvang. You know how you know how people mm. are when they hear an indigenous word and then they try to pronounce it themselves and it becomes a completely different word and you're like, why is this place called Buna Vista and you say, no, no, it's supposed to be Buena Vista. And the people there look at you and be like, no, it's Buena Vista. And you're like, but it's spelled, it's the Spanish word for, and they're like, they shake their heads at you and say, no, it's Buena Vista. Or it's Salida. And then you quake inside your bones as you wonder how these places got their names. La Jala. Yeah, I don't know what that one is, but I feel it. La Jolla. I feel it in my bones. Oh, yeah. Lombay. Yeah, these one things happen. Penisville. Sorry. <laughs> Are you sure that's a name Bird. on a map? <laughs> um, so, so Sol what you're Bang, saying Sol that Bang, is these people can't say the F sound. I'm just highlighting a mild cultural difference that has no impact or value in the story whatsoever. So what you're saying Except is the they name can't of the say Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the so do they say Vuck? Or... Yeah, I think they say Vuck. <laughs> <laughs> well, they might say duck. Um, anyway, we're in we're in Solvang. You've uh, been we resting met a racist for dwar uh, elf at the end of the episode who was saying, "Oh yeah, humans are the worst thing ever," but you know, we're just out yeah. live them. Yeah, yeah, they're they're are they a wrong? No plague. Yes, no, they're actually all. the worst. I mean, they essentially gave they, they intended to give the speech that. Um. Mr. Smith gives Neo in the first Matrix movie about humans being a cancer spreading over everything and consuming it all in their path. Mm. Um, but he didn't do it as but... eloquently. Because mm. he's an elf. And well, he's he had a scriptwriter. That's true. That's true. The one thing these elves haven't mastered in their thousand years of existence is, um, you know. Well, they don't have paper here, unless they're hard Well, again. I mean, they could just make a magic teleprompter, and then I think they'd oh. be better at it, you know? <laughs> God, someone should give them that idea. When we listened to one of the Elven songs as they were singing in the tavern, what were they singing about? Uh, the songs that they sung in the common language were all sort of um, like folk tales. Uh, they might be like about a particular hero in the area, but more often they're just sort of, how do you say, um, those songs that have like lots of choruses where everyone's supposed to chime in and you might takes you a while to learn all the words and all the different verses. And if you pay attention to it and you're like really trying to follow the story, it's like some mundane story about like little daughter Susie went to the river and she washed her clothes and then she went home and she baked her bread. And then she did. It's like, and there's another round and another round. And then Susie goes to the market and then like Susie goes to the fair and then Susie meets a friend and you know, they just, it's like a 30 minute song and everyone's supposed to sing in for chime in for certain choruses. So none about the four angels or anything. 
Right. No, no, no. There's no like wonderful songs about contemporary events. I mean, there's one or two about like, you know, this great warrior who fought this great thing way back when, la la la. And then you're like, okay, maybe it's a value. Maybe it's not. Would you like to? I always feel like, I always thought like the elves would s <clears throat> sing more like sad songs. Like mm. there's a thing in Portuguese called like fadu, which is basically music that is singing of like nostalgia or like a sense of like longing and it's like slow and like methodical um i was i don't know why well, i thought you were thing about that spot on and i think we did mention it last session is that their songs in elvish you have no idea what they're singing about but the tone of the music is sort of slow and al almost remorseful almost yeah. like nostalgic um, and you have no idea what the lyrics are. They could be saying, hey, baby, let's go kill all humans. But <laughs> the tonality of it is like, oh, remember when? Oh, no. so sad. Interesting. Interesting. What was that? Um, uh, anything else we need to put in the recap? Oh, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the martyr died because uh, we'll... The, the races from Ayu because uh, they didn't want to have uh, indebted to a goblin or because um, they were more afraid of uh, the dishonor of a goblin owing a life debt to a goblin. Yeah, yeah. Either way, they didn't value yeah, goblins very much. That's nah, fine. Is, this, uh, that is that what we're doing this session? <laughs> Are we going to turn around and go raise Ayu? No, I'm okay. Okay. Not what are yet. we gonna do no, this session? What's the plan, party? How long are you gonna hang out here? Do you need, since this is like clearly elven controlled territory, do you even need to scout it out and integrate it and like figure out well, if it can help you? Or is this just a move on because we don't care about well, the elves? If these elves are like the Arcadian elves that we're aware of, they won't care which human government's in power. They just want to, they'll just say, okay, here's the rule. Don't enter our forest. All right, mm -hmm. you, you get that human powers. All right, mm -hmm. okay. That's my that... assumption. We need to confirm that's true though, because these elves could be different. Could I feel be. like they might care because the other elves just had to leave because of humans. Mm. Yeah, but mm. there's already humans here, so. Mm. Yeah. Well, because I, I would imagine the jungles have been uh, a boon somewhat to the elves in that there's less human expansion in their area. True. What are they even doing in there? In their hmm. forest? Behind the river? Yeah. Shaping wood? Good question. Yeah. Shaping wood. Mm hmm. I didn't mean that. Could be anything sure you did. happening back there. Anything. Yeah. The spell's called Shape Wood. I mean, what? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And nothing more. How long, have, no How long have we, like, Tonder. been here? In this yeah, so far. Uh, we've been yeah, here six we months. Most of it was in the uh, halfling town. It's so bad. We've only been, been traveling for a, over two weeks. A day. Yeah. Today is day 27 of your journey. Uh, mm. And then, you know, you've been here for six months in general, but you've only been in Solvang one day. You arrived yesterday. Yeah. You sat down at the bar. That's about yeah. it. So and there's also watched. the uh, boat that went south instead of back north from uh, uh -huh. the other people. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you caught that in the morning. Mm -hmm. Caught that in the morning? Yeah. So, yeah. so everybody, how do we feel about them going south and not back north? Wait, they went south? I didn't see them off. You're the only one who saw them off. Well, yes. I'm telling you, they went south. How, dude, that's kind of weird. No? What are mm, they doing? Let me look at my rough map. What? That is pretty like strange. To the though. south, because that's just light. Well, well that could be again the other. They're still going walk. up river, which doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. Unless they get the Yaka. Ooh. Why would they go to Yaka? Us. I don't think they care that much. Not us, but our government. That's a uh, that's a long way to go to tell about four people who just showed up. I mean, it's a long way through a lot of real hard fights to make it there. They would have yeah, to go. So why do somewhere. they find it important to do it? Then? 
I don't, it's 61 I don't think the miles, assumption is so. us, because they would have gone back otherwise. They had mm. predetermined plans, you know? Well, they weren't going to come out here until we can. Does, I mean, does that river connect with another one? Not on and my map, but the map doesn't have all the maps. Faster to go to this strange other river that may or may not exist that I may have just made up? Uh, well, Trippier and Terry's, I, I mean, there might be some creeks that they didn't give us on the uh, rough map. Like, of. I mean, how old is the ma your reference map, though? No, I meant the. <clears throat> like, Neil told us that we have a rough modern map. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That the yeah, but game my game. maps are more detailed past and the one I'm making. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a good question. Speaking of the maps you're making, how long do you need to be in this town for? Uh, well, this town doesn't exist. It's not a walled town, right? So, um, and I'm not going to get access to the open side of the river. Right, but you can still see across a little bit. I mean, how long do you uh, Yeah, I could to, do some marking. Do Mark up. Well, look. Uh, give me two days and I'll be done in town, but getting all the uh, things. But if you... I, that should be more than enough to get the lay of the land. Like, uh, as you can guess, unlike I, the sight lines here are a lot worse because the uh, tree coverage is much more dense. So well, I am what, still the trees the here are real easy to climb. You can do it real feet. easy every time. Mm, okay. <laughs> uh, so I'd give well, you guys you a little bit of time days. to, to uh, you know, find out more about the town. What about you, Sonny? You know, what do you, you think that they're going anywhere in this jungle? I mean, you've been fighting the things. Do you think they're going anywhere too fast? I don't know where they're going to go, but... I can't imagine them living. Uh, I I had to save that fucking bitch's ass twice, I think. Yeah. They'll probably just go and die. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe. <sighs> well, the next place we want to go is Ember's Keep, right? Yeah. That's, do we have enough time to, to do talk that? About. We've took taken us a uh, month to get this far. A month and we got to be back in five months mm. yeah if we go to well, embers keep we're gonna either have to cut out well probably ricky at least oh the ricky's the wizard at least that one we have to, have to cut out ricky or yaka basically if we go to embers keep. and yaka's the capital hmm. what what do we know about the embers keep uh I don't think we know anything. Uh, I don't think we know anything like in character. The... I just heard it's a bunch of swamp, but more than that, nothing. I, I could have sworn someone said it's like some sort of swamp castle. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's a, yeah, that's all I got. Well, castles yeah. are usually pretty important. Like, that's yeah, where they're usually was. pretty important. But the, Maybe uh, it's a castle who doesn't work for Yaka. Or we can um, ask around. Well, well kind of what I was thinking is we'd talk to the elves about what the people going south would be doing. They're big into trade here, and supposedly there are dwarves somewhere. Uh, uh, so we do we know where the out. nearby dwarf trading post is. It's marked do with we? a dwarf icon. I see that in my third eye, but I don't know about my two eyes. I don't know if we know where that is. Well, it's on the map. We were told about it at I, you remember? Yeah. Were we? Yeah. Yeah, we'll go, we're plan was going to the Soul Fang, then head to the Dwarf Trading Post. That was the idea anyway. I got an idea. Why don't we ask around here, see what the fastest way to get to Ember's Keep is. And, like, just ask on, like, hey, how would... How would we get to Ember's Keep from here? How would we get to Uma from here? How would we get to Yaka from here? And we can figure out a best way to go. Mm. Right. That's right. I'll work on the, uh, local That's why you're you here. guys work on the intelligence. Yeah, and then, like, Dan, you and I can figure that out. And while we're doing that, Sonny and Hank go figure out the politics of this place. Because this is the 
the local power in the area. And if they do a lot of trade, we can probably get a lot of information real quick about a lot of different places, you know? Know a little bit about a lot of things. Yeah, that's true. Well, we got need about two days, yeah? Yeah, I yeah. think two days should be sufficient. Yeah, three days if I'm not rushing, but two days I could get everything calculated. Well, yeah, lined up, calculated later. Math is uh, math is hard. Take your time. Well, it took me two. Oh, I'll, I'll just slots. leave that. I'll just leave that to Dan. He two proficiency slots. Yeah. For mathematics, yeah, that's a. And I don't even have engineering. No, oh, not easy. God. Not easy. Things that um, are not easy: math and being green. That's about it. Oh, you know, it's even worse than math: public hmm. math. Oh. <laughs> every day um well sonny i think you and me've got a, a date around town to go see what's going on here uh, i'll go learn about go. embers keep that's what you want to do first where you think about going um i'm just gonna go talk to someone go talk to someone i try well, yeah that's what i usually do you know that's not a bad idea but maybe we directionally talk to someone and we go near the trading post and talk to those people. I bet those people might, you know, talk to the most people who come from different places. Probably better if we split up, right? Talk to more people? Split up. For clues. Split up and cover more ground. Mm. Classic strategy. Never fails. Classic. <laughs> yeah, never a problem. You uh, talk to the people at the trading post, and I'll talk to some people in the bar. Also find out how, like, how culturally this town runs like do the elves have a is there a caste system that sort of jazz sociological stuff yeah yeah you, you guys can figure all that out and dan if we have some extra time you can have some sociological funds as a treat just a little bit you have to do math yes <laughs> well i mean to be fair he did talk to the giant dragon thing i don't know what that's about he did talk well, to them. Okay. No, there no. is two known great worms of this land in ancient times, and they were Pathos and his uh, sibling, who is of the lakes, and Pathos, who was of the rivers. And uh, blah, 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 blah. Not, not necessarily. Blah, 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 blah. Find someone. Toodaloo. And I'll wave and run out. <laughs> All right. All right. Who are you looking for? You can give me like a type yeah, of person, I like a job know or a physical description. What I'm looking for. Yeah, what is looking it? Looking for the oldest fucking geezer I can find. Someone who looks wise and elderly. Mm. Um, could be a man, could be a woman. Either. Um, are we looking but I for elf, non elf? What's the deal? Doesn't matter. Whoever the oldest person looks. Yeah. So if, you, if I find an elf that looks like an old motherfucker, sure, I'll talk to them because they're okay. probably old as fuck. Right, but if you, you find an old-looking human, they're probably going to be way younger than even a young-looking elf. I just, I just wanted to make sure. Well, I'll talk to one cool old that. human and one old-looking elf or one elf. Yeah. Well, the humans around these parts, I got to tell you, living in this jungle has not done wonders for these people. Uh, because some of these people are, like, young and strong and, you know, you're making your way through your jungle so you're constantly fit but all of the people that are a little bit older look like they've been worn down by you know a lifetime of insect bites and diseases and they they got that like i'm 65 but i'm like just a thousand wrinkles all the way down from head yeah. to toe they've got that like worn and weathered um vibe all about them so it's not too terribly hard to find uh, an ugly person, and it's not too terribly far hard to find an old person. And sure enough, you will find an old human, and you'll, you'll find a bunch of elves, and you can sort of take your pick of them. Can I roll uh, you a check for which awesome elf I got to talk to? I don't know a what check, check you'd be rolling. Oh, a luck I'm check. A luck I do check. that. I, I roll a luck check. I roll the luck checks. I roll the luck checks. I check. roll the checks. That's right. Mock me with your nerd voices, everyone. Give me your best. I'll talk to the human first. Okay. Oh, excuse me. Sir, madam? Can't tell. 
Uh, she will me. squint at you and goes, I'm a madam. Oh, hello, madam. Uh, my name is uh, Sunny. Ah, Sunny, are you looking for work? Could you use someone yeah. of just your body type here? Yeah, what do you need? Oh, excellent. We have one of the top five cleanest brothels in the city. Oh, well, <laughs> thank you. That's I appreciate only five. That. <laughs> but I, I'm not interested in that type of work. I'd be more than happy to help you maintain the brothel for a day for some information. See, I'm not from here. Mm. Yes. If you had been from here, I would have known. How long have you lived here? I've lived in this beautiful village the entirety of my 45 years on this planet oh wow you look so young for that oh well, thank you, I, the see old you I see why you manage the brothel it's... well you learn while you're young and then you do while you're old <clears throat> must have been a hard life for you Oh, I've heard that joke a thousand times. Please try something new. I, I wasn't doing a joke, madam. I'm so sorry. Uh, have you ever, um, do you ever ship ladies out or men to uh, Ember's Keep for the Lord there? Oh, that filthy infested rat hole? No, no. <laughs> By all the gods, no. I wouldn't wish that on my worst girl or boy. Mm, does the Lord there not upkeep their... Establishments? They're an inbred lot of dirty swamp people is what they are. Ah, so, uh, are they aggressive? What are we, uh, getting at here, young lady? And what do I get in exchange for all of this information? What would you like? Hmm, what would I like? Your bags look heavy. Maybe I could carry them for you for a day. <laughs> Regale no, you no. with the stories of my homeland. From which city are you from? I'll go and whisper to her. <clears throat> uh. Well, you see, I'm, I got marooned here. I'm from Solemn. Solemn what? I'll go on to explain how there's other places mm. um, in the world, and I'm from mm. a big nation oh, of what? big people. And I'll uh -huh. describe my hometown and just say it's from Solemn. Totally. Mm. Um, give me a, a charisma check. Go. Cool. Oh, charisma check. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, an another one. <laughs> 26. That's a great check. Yeah. <clears throat> she hears your story, listens, and goes, well, isn't that something? Um, And then sort of just shrugs it off like, you know, like you, you like you've just told her about nothing important happening next door. Yeah. Like, like she's got like a narrow mind of the narrow view of the world. Well, uh, I it's a very nice something something that I'll never see. Um, I I'll take gold. That's what I'll we that's bag. what we trade for here. Gold. How much um? Gold how much gold for you to regale me with you know the information for your information for a whole day? I want to know, uh... Oh, wait, a whole day? Oh, by the gods, I couldn't <laughs> talk to you about Ember's Keep for a whole day. Ha! <laughs> There's not enough to tell. It doesn't have to be Ember's Keep. You could tell me about the elves. Well, I'm a busy and, woman. Uh... I, I, my, I work quite I'll a lot. jingle my pouch. How about I go buy you a few drinks in the uh, tavern and we can talk? How about, how about that? Yes, a few drinks and, um, maybe a gold... A couple of gold an hour, and uh, we'll we'll get to the bottom of your questions, Missy. Sure. I'll give you ten gold at the end of our conversation, and I'll buy your drinks. Oh, wonderful! Why didn't you open with that? So let me tell you all about Ember's Keep, and what a rat hole of an incestuous... You see that person over there? You see that ugly person with an arm bent sort of backwards and one foot that looks hairy and another foot that looks smooth and the red and green eyes? That mongrel of a man is from Ember's Keep. Ugh, disgusting. And she keeps walking down the road. Disgusting creatures over there. The whole lot of them. 
No, you don't want to go to Ember's Keep. That's a terrible place. You want to go somewhere nice. Somewhere more beautiful, like Uma. Oh, what a lovely place they say Uma is. Oh, you've never been. I've never left this city. Why? Too dangerous? Why would I? You don't have the sense of adventure? Yeah, when you, you mean the gal, sense of you... folly? Uh, there was no... <laughs> There was no options when I was a young girl. I was employed. Could not leave. Shrug it off. How about the elves? Um, oh, lovely they creatures. Attend the brothels? Oh, certainly. Not mine, unfortunately. I'd love to pull some of that customerage, but no, no. Well, I only I'm picked sure. one. Their favorite. She'll uh, point a finger over at the uh, the chieftain. Okay. Take that into consideration. Mm, interesting. Is that, um... Have you ever been to the other side or heard of anyone going to the other side of the, the river? <laughs> no, I'm sure an elven lord no. comes over and will bring their uh, constituent. I kind of say not knowing how to say the word. <clears throat> well, their lover over? They're, they'll, they'll cross to this side if they're going to attend our <clears throat> businesses. Uh, but no, no. Elven side is for elven side only. Occasionally, maybe they'll, they'll let some halflings or gnomes cross. Uh, I've heard about it maybe oh, three years ago. A troop of halflings were called for some specialty experience with orchids. I'm not sure what the dealio was, but... Mm. That's Are they I back heard. here? I. She shrugs. How would I know? I don't know. You heard that they left. I thought you might know that oh. they came back. No. Oh. No one ever talked about them coming back. Now that you mention it, maybe maybe they were <laughs> eaten by elves. <laughs> oh, what a what a lovely way to go. <laughs> well, so um, <clears throat> Uma. They do know what to do with their tongue. Yes. <laughs> you. <laughs> You've never been there, but what have you heard about it? Is it peaceful? No, there's no such thing as a peaceful city, uh, but it's right in this gentle river valley near the sea, near this uh, big, you know, where the river meets the ocean and there's the sound of waves crashing and I've never seen the ocean. They say it's blue for as far as the eye can see and even the gray storms the above. Oh, wow. Well, aren't you well-traveled then, young lady? I'll also explain uh, that there is a peaceful city here. It's called Bastion, and it's in the top left. And I'll explain that it's just she a half snorts. village. And it's not a city. I suppose it's peaceful, though, if, if they just allow the orcs to overrun them from time to time. I suppose that's one coward's way of peace. True, it is a coward's way. I agree. What about um? What about that? Those young four. Did they ever come through here? The people who own Yaka? Oh, the great rangers of Yaka. Oh, yes, they come through here every now and then. Yep. And the elves, they, they just gave up and let them do what they want? No, not at all. The elves stay on their side of the river and the rangers of Yaka on the other side of the river. So as mm -hmm. long as you don't go to the other side, the elves don't care. That's correct. Yes. Yep. Yep. Brilliant. The elves have their um, domain, and they leave everything else to us. What about the dwarves? I've heard that there's dwarves near here. There are silly little underground creatures. Dirty hands, dirtier toes. I go on a rant about how I hate dwarves <laughs> as much as, uh, you know, the next guy. <laughs> mm. She will nod along. You know, every time you, you declare a new um, reason to dislike dwarves, she, like, nods along with you. But when you're done with your spiel, she'll be like, yes, yes. But they have lots of coin. That's true. They made this. And I'll motion to my rapier, or my mm -hmm. sword. Mm -hmm. She'll nod her head in understanding. Uh, good craftsmanship and money can make up for a lot of personal and social deficiencies i'll slide a gold coin over and um ask uh well before i let you go um 
Is there anything near Ember's Keep or Uma? Is there anything on the way that I should visit? <clears throat> they say Yaka's in that direction too. Everything is south from here. Or, or north, I suppose. But, um, but there's nothing to like the east near the water. And we're just, I'm depending on, or I'm, I'm undecided on which way to go, to go to um, visit this shithole oh. of Ember's Keep. Why would you want to visit it? If the story is as, uh, as you've told, it sounds quite interesting. Inbreds? All together? That doesn't mean Function? that there's people between two pieces of bread, you know. <laughs> no, I understand. I mean, they fuck their children. Or their cousins, or something like that. It's quite curious. <laughs> Well, that's, uh, <laughs> fine, fine. Good, good luck, young lady. I'm sure you'll be a hot commodity over there. Uh, but no, I, I wouldn't know any way thing about getting there or, or what west way to go. I would, I don't know, I would hire a guide or a scout or... I, I just wouldn't go. They live in a okay. swamp. Have you, have you seen the skies of the mosquitoes around here? She's, by all the gods, who would want to live in a swamp on a stupid rock surrounded by tall walls with nothing but your own sister cousins. Well, thank you. I appreciate the talk. What was your name again? Mm. Oh, my name is Sophia the Fabulous. Oh, I'm Madam sure Sophia. I can but tell you can call me Sophie. I give her a wink. All right, Sophie, I'm heading out. See you ever would like a job? <laughs> We're always looking for strong ladies. It's a type we don't often see in this uh, enterprise. I leave to go find the guy with the one arm. But oh. I can do mine later. Yeah. All right, let us flip around to who else had something we wanted to do? Uh, uh, I because to start doing some math. Oh, math, math. right, okay. <laughs> well, you could do your math your math on meth, but I don't know if you'd get the right answer. Oh, you'd get Sorry answers. For my all right. accent. You'd get answers, that's for sure. <laughs> you'd get answers. No, you'd get no. I'm doing it sober. No, nope. yeah. The answer is that the government's coming for you. You gotta watch out. That's the answer well, you get. Well, they are coming for me. Like, they arrested me for no reason. I was mm -hmm. innocent. That's just the meth. <laughs> it's just the math. It just it checks out. Um, uh, Will. Uh, I was gonna go try to find. Some Sorry, traders. I meant the other Will. Oh, this is the problem. <laughs> this is the problem. Woodsy, Woodsy Will. Woodsy Bill. Oh, okay. There you go. Said what, the name right. What, what did you want to do? Will or William. Um. Yeah. Uh I want to figure out how to get to three places: Uma, Yaka, and Ember's Keep. Ah. So, um, I figure the traders are going to, you know, go lots of places mm -hmm. and they'll probably know the best ways, either yeah. the fastest or the safest. Yeah. Well, as you're talking to people, you're going to hear people refer to the Korkakis and the Talbid mountain ranges. Um, mm -hmm. and they will, you know, point them out because you can see the mountains from Solvang. You know, if you've got a mm -hmm. clear view, there's the mountain range to the southwest, southeast, and one to the southwest. And they say between the Talbid and the Korkakis Mountains is a valley, and that valley will lead you to um, an intersection. And if you go west from there, you go to Yaka, and if you go east from there, you can follow the Golang River down to the coast, uh, which is right near Uma. And um, if you head east from the Golang River, you will eventually meet the swamp of Ember's Keep. Okay. Make me... Hmm. Make what me an intelligence check, check. Oh, it's probably fine. Probably. 18's not yeah, good enough. Yeah, it's probably fine. They it's throw out fine. some other names, yeah. but you have a hard time remembering where to place them. They talk about the Arlen Mountains... And the Sky Shroud Mountains. Um, 
and they talk about the Yongola River, and they talk about a few other things, but it's just sort of... Yongola? You know, I bet that one's by Yaka, because mm. they'll start with Y. That's a... That's how names work, yeah. Anyway, um, that's... Yeah. They, they, that's a right. pretty straightforward question and a pretty straightforward answer. Yeah. Okay. It's like... So then I'll ask is uh obviously the, the route's very dangerous. Um anything different from up in this area? What do you mean by different? The fauna. Like mm. different different monsters, different beasts. Well, or I'm more of the same. They shake their head and tell you that the the creatures of Bravo, um, the, the terrain is, is similar enough and the rivers are crossable enough that the flora and fauna is pretty much ubiquitous. Like it's stabilized and everything thrives everywhere. Like the jungle has slightly different creatures than the bamboo. But if you go from mm -hmm. one jungle on one side of the country to another jungle on the other side of the country, it should all be the same. And then okay. they'll pause and be like, well, I don't know. There's that swamp near Ember's Keep. Maybe beyond that, there's something different. But that's the only really major, like, um, barrier for creatures to cross. What's what's so different about the swamp at Ember's Keep? I mean, we're in that's... a swamp up north. Mm, well, is, the it, swamp, is it any different? The swamp of Ember's Keep divides two sections of jungle. All the other swamps of Bravo... Um, you know, they're on the edge of something, but they wouldn't okay. necessarily prevent passage. It's the only okay. section that is, like, isolated in some way, shape, or form. Gotcha. Um, I do have one other question. We heard about dwarves. Uh, they, they've got a trading post mm -hmm. near here. Mm -hmm. Is that pretty easy to get to? Mm. you're shooting the shit with the traders and uh they look at you you don't know where the dwarven trading post is but they yeah, do yeah we just mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just heard is near here and I know a rough generalization that it's like west of here oh there's a few and they're accessible if you know what it looks like sort of hidden from the outside a bit you got to know where you're going. You have to have been led there once before to find it. Well, I do do pretty well with directions. Um, I'll reach in my pocket, realize that I'm not carrying the cash. You have no cash. You're cashless. Why well, your name is not Johnny. I'm in fact not Johnny Cash. I'm just Woodsy Bill. I'll, like, Holy going to reach in my pocket, like, I can kind of see where this is going. Mm-hmm. Awkwardly empty. Mm-hmm. You know, I've got a friend that's also good with directions. I'll come back with him, and, uh, we'll continue down that, uh, how to get there or where to get there. But what sort of stuff, like, what are the dwarves like? What do they have? What do they sell? What do they do? Oh, they make all sorts of metal tools. Uh, mostly they just live underground, eating their stupid mushrooms, getting whatever, you know, fruits and vegetables and meats can be harvested from the surface. Uh, live in their dirty hovels with their low entryways and their big ballistas and their crossbows and their spears and their axes and their traps, their countless traps. If you ever try and if you ever do successfully sneak past one of them, oh boy, you're gonna get speared on something or fall through a floor or have a, a wall crush you from the side. Oh, those damn dirty dwarves. But underneath the mountains you can hear the bang, bang, bang. They say if you put your earth your ear to stone in the right place, you can hear the 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 forges going off in the distance. Have you ever tried it? Put my ear to the stone? No. Yeah. Like, 
I assume you've been there, like, you've been to the trading post multiple times. Of course times. I've been to the it? trading posts. Yeah, yeah, but have you ever tried it? No, it's what you, it's the things that you say to the kids, you know, don't go out into the woods because the goblins are going to eat you. And, like, yeah, obviously there's goblins, but who goes out in the woods to see if the goblins will eat you? Yeah, they say if you uh, put that, your that, ear that, to the right stone. That's pretty different than oh. stick your ear to the stone you can hear the forges. I mean, like, just think of the risk involved in the two. Go go out into the forest at night. Yeah, that's pretty dangerous. You end up speared on whatever's hungry. Stick your ear to the stone to see if the forges are going while you're looking at the dwarves. What's the worst that can happen? The dwarves yeah, they laugh at really you. You look really silly when you yeah, put your you head to the rock silly. in front of all your friends. Yeah, and then you can tell them whatever you want. You can you can convince them to put their ear to the rock. By Jexel's left nut, that sounds like a great idea. And besides, I'll do it. I'll even be the first one, so you don't look nearly as stupid doing it. Well. I just have to figure out where the, how to get there. I could probably figure it out. I you mean... You probably can. You look like a wise young man. Let's hear it. Go that way. Um, what, it's like at the nearest mountain there on that kind of like west-southwesterly mountain range? It's not hard finding the mountain. It's hard finding the entrance on the mountain. You could search the mountainside for days without coming across the, the secret location. Well, as secret as the location can be, there's always going to be, there's always going to be something that'll lead you there that isn't necessarily... Why, you sound like a ranger. Uh, I'm just a humble woodsman. Mm. Just a humble woodsman that, you know, make my way, hunt for food, find lost people, guide crazy people through woods. You know, I do what I can. Ah, woodsmen. He pauses after a moment. Right, right. We got lots of woodsmen around here. You might be able to find it. You might be able to pick up a, a trail if you're lucky. Good luck to oh, you. I'm pretty lucky. Woodsman, would you say your name was? I'm Woodsy Bill. Ah, Woodsman Bill. Best of luck to you. Oh, thank you. Okay. Is there, If there's anything else you want, we could do it or, or we could move on to um, other will. Greater will. <laughs> Probably the other thing I'll do is go grab Hank later. Like, I think I know how we can get to the dwarves, but I don't have any cash because the merchants is greedy. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Well, if he runs me down, you know. So Hank was kind of thinking about this, you know. Um, Sonny was going to find. <laughs> Find out what was going on in Ember's Keep. Uh, Woodsy Bill, you know, is fighting off the dogs in the background, but he's learning about, uh, you know, how to get somewhere because that's just what he does. And uh, man, just one second. Yeah. All right. Well, while, while <laughs> anyway. I'm doing my mapping, I'm... sorry. No, no, that's it. Was a quick one second there. <laughs> um, Actually, a second. <laughs> yeah, it was just uh, didn't want to blow out some eardrums. Uh, you know, he's thinking about to the whole purpose of why we're here, you know? We gotta make some friends, make the other kind of friends, and uh, figure out who's in charge. And no one's really looking for who's in charge right now. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk around the city and see if we can't find, like, figure out the structure of it for a little bit. You know? Hmm. We're gonna find a good populated place, kind of by the traders, I think, that looks over most of them. And we're gonna see if people move out of the way, if there's, like, some social structure happening here that's, like, more, you know, you watch people move, and if people move out of the way, or if there's, you know, certain people getting different kind of attention, or more, like, bowed heads and, like, looking away kind of thing, or just trying to see what's going on. Yeah, so the first thing that will you'll notice, definitely, no roles needed, is that there's not really a town guard. 
like you do see people okay. with weapons, but you don't see anything resembling uniforms. You don't see anything resembling like organized patrols. Like sure, there's like five guys walking down the street with some swords and spears and shields, but they they're walking down the street like they're tourists or like they're merchants or something. They don't look like they are, you know, on the clock, so to speak. Um, so yeah, there's no town guard. That's a little odd. Uh, can I get from you a intelligence check, a wisdom check, and a charisma check, please? God. Nice. Intelligence okay. is 26, wisdom is 17, charisma is 21. Okay. So with your intelligence check, um, you're g the one thing you're going to notice about relating to the guards is that the, the no-town guard rule seems to extend until you hit the bridges that cross the river. Uh, and at that point there seems to indeed be a single elf upon each bridge that may cross the river um, who seems very casual. They have like a short sword at their side and a quiver at their hip with like like five arrows in it. You know, it's a small quiver and a short bow with them. And they're just chilling, dude. They're just chilling. They kind of wave at people who might get a little close. Um, and no one tries to cross the bridge other than elves. And uh, they they're, they seem superfluous. As if they're guarding something no one would ever dare cross. Um, the wisdom willpower check has failed miserably. Yep. And the charisma check, you will also notice that while there do appear to be like a stratified social class, like there's clearly laborers and business owners and people who are bringing things in and people who are like organizing. And that person looks like they own a warehouse because they're like writing, uh, not writing, but they're trading out money and handing like chips, chits to people in exchange for things. And people are dropping stuff off in this building and then leaving again. But you're not noticing a noble upper class. It goes like, you know, slaves and then workers and then maybe skilled workers and then it's like traders and then it's landowners. But like the landowners are the same as the building owners and it's kind of hard to tell the difference between the building owners and the the traders. But there doesn't seem to be any like, I'm too good to socialize with or I am you know, too fancy to, like you need to treat me extra special. It appears to be a, um, a gently sloped hill of a social class society, not like a, a proper pyramid where you might have in Arcadia. Okay, so what about the um, race distribution throughout the classes? Mm. That makes any sense? Yes, it does. Uh, humans seem to cover all layers pretty easily, and they do dominate the upper, like land, not land, the business class. Um, it's either human or half elf. The half elves can be really hard to tell apart from the humans, but humans or half elves, or maybe they're all half elves, but you can't quite tell because you only barely pass your charisma check. Um, so humans are half elves at the very top. Humans throughout the whole thing, seemingly. Can I throw a perception check to see if I can figure that out? No, salary. Um, goblins definitely occupy a like we bring in things from the outside, and then we will like you know if you bring in a deer, I will skin and gut the deer, and then like I, someone will take the the fur from me, the skin from me, and turn it into leather, and someone else will like take the meat and like go sell it in the marketplace. But I will do the the lower laboring jobs. So are they, um, like, are they in the slave class category too? Is everybody hanging out down as being a slave? Yeah, yep. Um, okay. No half orcs in the the slave class though, but you will see them in some of the other ones, especially in the more um, hunter gatherer area, and also in actually in the tradesman area. They kind of jump from like the bottom of hunter gatherers to I run the market or like I run this market or I run this shop. Um, and they kind of miss, they kind of skip over that skilled laborer and the, the general laborer class. Okay. But the goblins don't ever get to the skilled laborer class. They're just like slaves or lower working class is mostly where they're living. Yeah. Any, yeah. any exceptions that I see out of the blue or no, no, not really. No, not with those rules. Okay. All right, cool. Um, Let's see what else is going on. 
Is there anybody who comes through who seems particularly more important? You said it's pretty like sloped as a, a general term, but is there anybody who seems to be owning a lot of buildings or is going between buildings and just talking to people, handing out the shits, and they seem to be having more of a how are things going vibe? You know, uh, like a, that just would checking need in. more time for observation. You would probably need like a week to figure out that, not a not an afternoon. Okay. Because you're going to so, get a lot of false positives, and also there's you know maybe someone who's like. It's their day off, and, and you won't be able to tell. You need you need a lot of observation time to pull that out. Okay. Then uh, my second thought here is, um, is there any place that the people who are running the businesses, they seem to frequent more often? I mean, like, oh, I'm not going to be able to tell it just one day. Yeah. Um, so at the end of the day, thing. end of the day, is there any place that more of them go than not? Just uh, like a one day, one time. Like, of the business owners that I can, like, watch... Mm -hmm. Is there any one bar or place they go most? Hmm, that's a very good question. Um, no, no, uh, like they all seem pretty busy during the day. And I guess if you're watching until the night begins to set in, you might mm -hmm. catch that, like, eventually things begin to quiet down and people go to their local you know, social gathering places in the, the late afternoon. Right. Um, and so you might. Is there any place that like two of them yeah. go together? I'm just trying to find a place that yeah. like, I can spend my time at the end of the day and be most productive. There we are. There is a tavern that seems to cater to maybe the people with more money. And, and yeah, there are some places that accept like a higher class of coin that the more wealthy people do maybe seem to go to. Okay. Yeah. All right. Ah. Um, I would like to go there in the evening, but if anyone else has anything before we get to evening. Well, like, as I'm doing the map, um, I, I do ask about the names of the ma visible mountain ranges. Mm. The uh, Elven mountain range, the one towards IU, you know, all the you know, geographical names of the area. Yeah. Um, everyone will just... They refer to the Elven Mountains that you can see from here as the Elven Mountains. All right. Boringly enough. Mm -hmm. um, although I should definitely... I don't have a token for that yet. The Elven Mountains. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Good job, Neil. Uh, 35 pixels in size. Thank you very much. <clears throat> um, aside from that, you can easily get the name of the Talbot Mountains, the Korkakis Mountains, and you will also get the name... I think you can see the Worm Ridge from here, and you will easily pick up the name of the Worm Ridge if you're just asking around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you've already got the Thune River named. Mm-hmm. Um, the... You will know that beyond the Talbot Mountains, if you're asking people, are is Mount Zorin. All right. That's beyond. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I think that's everything you can see from here. Does the Elven Woods have a name beyond the Elven Woods? Elf home? Elf land? Mm. Oh, what's the mountain range south of Ayu? I'm sorry, the what? The mountain range south of Ayu? Oh. Yeah, there's someone here that will answer that question for you. Um, I can figure out how to zoom properly. There we go. That mm. is the Shellwell Range. Shellwell. Shellwell. Because that's a great name. It is. Not a sarcastic remark, even though it sounds like it. Shellwell's a great range for mountains. A great name for mountain ranges. I'm sure it's fantastic, Neil. It is fantastic. I don't want to hear it. Uh, said it. <laughs> I am satisfied with it, too. Believe it or not. Where's Atropos at, McTacky? Uh, uh, Who? Well, you want out what? of character. Out of character, of course. All right. Down the bottom right corner mountain range. We're well out of our way. Oh, okay. The, that's Near where Ember's Old Keep. Necrot was. Near Ember's Keep. Yeah. 
Shaft. Out of character. I didn't know that when I was pushing for Ember's Keep. Just so everyone knows. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <I'm stupid. laughs> I, I really just wanted to go see the fucking hillbillies fucking each other. <laughs> <laughs> you go to Alabama a lot. <laughs> no, I'd like to. Hey, if, never mind. All right. <laughs> I, I, speaking of which, I will run after and see if I can find um, someone who looks <laughs> physically deformed. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> ask them if they're from Ember's Keep because that's what that lady said. So totally. Yeah, you go find that like person Thanks. with the backwards arm and the one foot that doesn't match the other foot and the heterochroma yeah. eyes and like the ball like, on one head. Three gold to them. Uh, yeah, and they are sort of just squatting on the side of the robe, uh, road and uh, looking. They seem to be well, they're sort of dully looking around. They've got a, a sack next to them that they could throw over a shoulder. And you stop and hold out a few goals to them. And they look up at you and go, hey. I'll put one of the pieces in their hand and ask um, as I hold, kind of, like, I drop one and I, like, hold the other two in my hand. Mm -hmm. And I'll say... Are you are you from Ember's Keep? Yeah. Can you can you tell me about it? I'll take you there. If you've got a bunch of people, I need to get home. Well, yeah, I do actually have a group here. Why don't you come with me to the bar and I'll buy your drinks and we can just talk about Ember's Keep and what it's about. It's great. You suspiciously. This is going. <laughs> According to someone's plan, but is it his plan? Hmm. After eyeing you for a few moments, he nods. He goes, okay. And, um... I'll follow you. I'm not from here. I don't really know where the bar is. Uh. So you have a guide. Uh, you have a guide. The guide will take you to a tavern. Um, and have a slot in it. Spot, a, a, a seat drinks. in it. Yep. And uh, I want him to the, basically just give me like the lowdown of what Ember's Keep is. Is it actually like the lady was saying? I'm not gonna ask like so crass. Like, are you really all like redneck fuckers? Or uh, I'm gonna be like, well, who is your lord? Like, can you tell me a little bit about your customs? Right. right. Those are those I are have... nice ways to ask that question. Yeah. I have etiquette. If you'd like an etiquette check, I'd like to roll it. I would love an etiquette check for you because this is sort of you have 32. very very one-sided information that you're trying to not uncomfortably say. Yeah, right, that sounds pretty successful. That's, that's thirty-two. That's successful. Yeah. That is great success, sir. Great um, success. Yeah. Uh, Ember. Ember. Ember's keep. Lost my notes. Do we read one note? Or... <laughs> no, I got what it sounds of... like is it sounds like a safe haven that anyone can fucking go to and not be judged or shitted on, but it could just be Redneck Central. Yeah, I think the latter. <laughs> it's Redneck Central. Uh, okay, if you're not so... human, if you're not one of the family, you're suspicious. <laughs> uh, this, this, this inbred backwoods mongolman of a, a hillbilly's name is Cass. And Cass will tell you about the glory of Ember's Keep. Because now you're you're in a tavern. We're gonna change away from the like hanging out in the elf town soundtrack to the hanging out in the tavern soundtrack. Oh friend of mine. Oh Ember's Keep. It's the greatest city in all of Arcadia. It's the only city in Arcadia that existed here before the storms came and the mountains rose, and to this day it still stands strong as ever. Its great towering walls are always in repair, and the swamps have yet to take our people. Ah, a beautiful place. Wow, you Wonderful sound like a really zone. strong group of people. We are a strong must group be of people. Immaculate. We keep it pure. How many generations have you been here? Since before the storms came and the mountains rose, however long ago that would be, but no one could count such infinite expanses of time. 1517 wow. so years. Lies and slander. 
So you're all, like, um, related. And since you were here before the mountains came and the storms rose, I assume <laughs> that you have a great, great wizard with you in your in your kingdom. Not a single wizard to be found, but plenty of sorcerers and clerics. Oh, wow. I came here with a cleric. And, yeah, how did you come here? Me and my party left Ember's Keep. We came to Solvang looking for altices, the proper herbs. You see, Ember's Keep. He shakes his head. The swamps nearby are filled with... He kind of like will lift his uh, a part of his shirt and show you this like really weird oozing rash that he's got. Mm. Uh, the things there, they crawl in your skin and they make it pus and bleed. And only... Only the elven medicinal components will er, will will quell the itching. Well, so we came here. Oh, yes, yes, we did. But on our way, my cleric died. Perished. Perished so to sorry. a great monster. And so now I'm looking Which... for someone to help me get home. For I cannot make it through the woods alone. Which monster? Oh, the sharp tooth. Oh, I fought a few of them. Hmm. Uh, you sur you fought and survived an encounter with a sharp tooth? I think not. I know my face may be ugly, but my mind is beautiful. Uh, I'm gonna give him a story how I fought this monster <laughs> and I survived it. Here's my That's storytelling. That's not story. a sharp tooth. <laughs> says with your natural one. <laughs> That's oh, was... not a sharp tooth. It was the one where they have the arms and they're like bone, but... That's not a sharp tooth. That's an arm claw. Oh, I'm so sorry. I wasn't trying to deceive you, but when my party gets back, um, I don't know. I think we need a few days and then we'll be able to head out and go on the, the adventure to Amber's Keep. And you're Will progressing you... the conversation. You're setting objectives. You're talking about what you want to do with this person. And they're I just like, ask. but you know, they say in my culture, the uglier the head, the more beautiful the mind. And so it's okay because your head is very non-ugly. It would make sense that your mind is equally ugly. Well, thank you. Um, You're welcome. Is it possible that you could get us a meeting with your lord? Since you're related. Can't go that side of the river, Moot. Oh, yeah. That path you just drew. <laughs> That's fine. I was just drawing. Sorry. Okay. Okay. But we can't we cannot go on that side of the river. Mm. It's probably it's probably like your brother, right? You. No. No you no you nonsense. And that, and That's that we not brought you back. Us. No. No. Uh, my my brother does not run the city. It's not I guess a your thing. guys' family isn't as tight as I thought. Perhaps not. So you couldn't get us a meeting with your lord? Trying to... Oh... Get us a meeting with the local trash collector. I could pay I'm you. Trying to check my notes for information about the local lord, but my notes are bad. Yeah. The family member. Uh, I'm glad I'm not the only one. It makes me feel better. Gotta take them electric notes, you know? Get that control F going. Well, that's what mm -hmm. I'm doing, but then I'm control Fing and I'm getting entire blocks of information, and then I'm trying to read, like, eight paragraphs for one sentence, but I don't know what the sentence okay, is. Okay, do you want me to just read out what I know about the leadership? No! Because <laughs> what you know is probably not necessarily what I'm trying to say. Enough. Uh, I'll just give this to chat, just, as, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> What, what is this? No, no, chat gets to know too much. Leave him in the dark. <laughs> yeah, just go to the wiki right now and you can find the information yourself. Uh, is oh there an God. Ember's Keep Jeez. page on the wiki? It's, it's, in, it's under Bravo. Oh, it's each, under Bravo. Each city has its own section. Mm. Book is like, fuck, I gotta go there. <laughs> <laughs> what have I said about this place? You see... There are many of us. Our numbers are great, vast indeed, and uh, our families are tight-knit. 
we all know each other. I I know of the uh, the lords that lead us. They're not related to me, and I can't help you with that. But I would be more than happy to to go with you, or have you come with me to Ember's Keep. No, you asked about it, and I don't think I got a chance to tell you the grossest, so the, the gross details of this place. You see, there was a swamp, a swamp that still stands to this day. And as the storms came and the mountains rose, the bay grew larger and more shallow, and the swamp proliferated, cutting off one land from another land. And in the midst of that swamp was the town of Embers. Keep long did it rain before the storms came and the mountains rose, and long it rained still, built on a nice flat piece of rock that had been sacred to our people for thousands of generations before. Um, people tried. They tried to live in the swamp, and they charged exorbitant rates to the city folk to cross, and we eked out a living in the swamp. That is how it happened. Wow, what a beautiful story. I'm so glad that your family is still okay, and they're all, you know, surviving. Uh, yes, yes. What about the, um, the mountain range down there? Is there anyone who lives there? Is there a group of people? The White Butte Mountains? Good no. Name no. Oh, the the land is up. cursed. Oh. Cursed how? Oh. Once upon a time, before the storms came and the mountains rose, a great and evil empire lay within that area. It was once hills, and the great city of Necrot rose from there, towers reaching to the sky ruled by wizards of great origins for the wizards Eric's names lost to history uh -huh. Devon. To does your family have not you per se but you know ember's keep i would assume you guys would have expansive libraries about the history of... Libraries. Oh, I've heard that word. The elves speak of such things from time to time. I think they have one here. It's a little cubby in the back of one of the, the taverns. And there's a door, and if you open it up, there's a little leaf. And if you unfurl the leaf, there's scratches on the leaf. And the pattern of the scratches has special secretive meanings to the, to the elves. So you guys don't write anything down. You just pass it through, I would assume, song? Oral tradition. Please. I we're waiting on my friends. Let me let me buy you another beer and you can tell me a story or two. Ah, uh, let me tell you the story of the great walls of Ember's Keep. You see, it's a stone castle. The only stone castle in all of Arcadia. And it is built from stone, dwarven stone, because you cannot get the stone out of the swamp for it is covered in water. And so you must bring it from the dwarves, from the nearby mountains, from Mount Sky Shroud do the stones come. And we stacked them one on top of the other. And whenever the walls begin to fall, we bring in more stone and shore them up. We use these walls to defend the town against raids by other people. How do you feel about um, the four rangers? Which four? The ones from Yaka? Oh, the grand rangers. Did Embers keep bend the knee? The great confederation of Arcadia is a new tradition. It may yet survive it may yet thrive but no knees are bent hmm, understood uh yeah we'll just sit here and he he can tell me stories and i'll buy him more drinks and if he tells me if if one gets told that you think i might be interested in then you can tell me or we can continue on uh let's see anything else interesting about embers keep um Give me, give me a wisdom check. Him up. <sighs> really, not charisma. Uh, you know, you can never win. Anytime you ask a player for a check, they're always like, "That's not the right check to be asking for this uh, situation." It wouldn't have mattered. Oof. 
Yeah. Sorry. Right. Mm -hmm. Hates. And, no, but hold on nothing. now they the like best. a nice ugly person so that's a pretty ugly check <laughs> <laughs> no no i'm sorry yeah, that was it that's okay cool um did anyone else have anything else i wanted to go into the rich people bar at night oh yeah well, why don't we go to our break? When we come back from break, uh, you'll get some. You'll give some money to the other will, the real will, and then, <laughs> then we'll we'll do the tar the tavern, and we'll we do will. all of that on the other side of a break. So catch you in a few minutes. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Rise of Drekus, also known as Hillbillies and Hobos. Maybe not. Uh, not yet. Yeah. Okay. We'll try out yeah. new names for the future. Uh, I do believe that Hank is going to go hang out in the seemingly more wealthy part of town. He's going to give some money to Will, Woodsy Bill. Yep. Um, to, to make some purchases of information from some merchants. And I think, Daniel, you've been mapping and you've been getting names of places, right? Yeah. And I like, because the elves actually have better law keeping than all the other human settlements mm -hmm. we've been to, I want to know, like, the fates of the ancient empires from the elves. Obviously, this is not oh. mission critical remotely. Right, right. <laughs> so, like, what I'm doing, uh, a crop, a uh, Acropolis, uh, Herfholm, the Crop, Porpheus, the big cities I know about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Let me pull up all. Oh, it's called the L. While Neil uh, searches through the mysterious documents, how much money do you want, Connor? Ah, uh, five gold. Five gold should be good. All right. You're gonna tell me that, and we're gonna give you fifty because. That's how we're going to roll. It's a lot of gold. That's 50 These gold is a lot of gold. Yeah. This is the but richest you know, I've ever been. That's, yeah, that actually checks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't know if it's the most wealth. Uh, yeah, it is. Absolutely, actually. What am I saying? No, Hank's definitely, <laughs> nothing has ever happened in Hank's life. Very normal. Well, it's Bravo coins, but yeah, still made of gold. Still made of gold, and that's what matters. Here. I'll, I'll so, see that much. And be like, now, Hank, don't forget to blow out the candles after you leave the room. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's okay, buddy. Don't worry about it. Look, this is free money, you know? It's the kind that just came in and out of nowhere. It's like when you go somewhere new and they hand you all their <laughs> new fangled money and you're like, I don't know what I'm doing, what this means. That's what this is to me. Here you go. You know? So it'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. I imagine, uh, what, I, I guarantee if we try to take it back, they'll just take it from us. So we might as well spend it. It's a fair point. But we want to spend it more on interesting things and not candles. So remember to blow out the candles when you leave the room. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, Daniel, you will get the names mm. of a couple of more rivers. Uh, the yeah. Lunaha, Luanaha, mm -hmm. and the Suanaha yeah. rivers over on the the eastern side of the island um mm -hmm. you already got the shellwell range and the worm range you can also get the Korkakis, Korakis, yeah. the talbid and the elven mountains all coming along together but beyond that um it's proving a little bit difficult to get some like you get some names of places but the way that people describe things is a little like they refer to mm. mount sky shroud and the arlen mountain range as they're both south of Solvang mm. and south of the Talbot range. And it's not particularly clear and they don't particularly know. And so, you know, local information it being what it is, not yeah. great. Uh, but am I able to get like historical lore from some elves or such? Maybe I'm going to need you. Mm -hmm. Tell me how it is that you, you talk to these elves. Oh, you also. Since you were in and around IU, you can talk about in and around IU. They will tell you the Lang River is somewhere near mm. that, and you can piece that together. I um, assume I don't know about Port Yang Grub. Or what? Port 
Lang Grub. It's at the end of the Lang River. It's named after Grub. No, never heard of it. Sorry, buddy. Um, I tried Grub. Yeah. What were we? Oh, uh, right. Um, you, how do you ask? You, would you just go yeah, yeah, find yeah. a pointy ear and say like, "Hey, buddy, tell me all about the history of this place." Yeah. So racist. Oh yeah. Well, oh, welcome to the ancient world, my friend. <laughs> Like, the modern I'm looking for scholars, right? Basically, that's it. Scholars. Obviously, no one's got books here. Mm. But mm. is it like... Because it's like the inverse of thieves' cant. Scholar cant. Like, people talking a certain way because they're scholar. Like, they're talking techno babble. Right, right. Give me a charisma check. All right. They're not sage knowledge, but charisma. Nope. Right? Yeah, because we got. You're looking for a person. Ah. Twenty-two. Excellent. You listen. You keep your ears open, healed. Mm -hmm. You turn on the radar dishes, and sure enough, at a certain point, you will um, hear a pair of elves talking to a group of six humans about. Um. The, the humans want to buy a boat from the elves. And the elves, it seems to be a pretty innocuous, completely unrelated conversation to the sort of things that you would like to be, conversations you'd like to be having and, and information that you'd like to be getting. But mm. as, they, as you're starting to move on and look for someone else that might be of value, the elves say something about um, not since the end of the last age have our people shared with yours um, the seas of the no the, the secrets of the sea horses that might be of interest to what you're talking about perhaps yeah the sea horses that's I'm what not... they said the sea horses not since the last age have our people shared with yours the secrets of the sea horses hmm so Literal or not? Or that's just a class of ship? Could just be a ship they're talking about, right? Because that's what they were asking to buy. Yeah, yeah. But it could be pulled by Seahawk. That's the other thing. Yeah. Yeah, I... I do want to know about the stage, so... Alright, um... I says, uh, in the... Excuse me, you talking about the last stage? And uh, the seahorses? The elves look the... at you. The the humans and goblins and orcs look at you. Um, and yeah. one of the elves, with like the oiled honey voice of practice diplomacy. They see I have a book, by the way. Mm -hmm. They see I actually have a physical book. Mm -hmm. um, and they will glance at the book very quickly and then just you know gaze at your face and say, uh, Dear traveler friend, we would be happy to discuss with you any number of matters, but please, if you wouldn't mind letting us finish our business here. Apology. Of course. Take a seat and, and we will come to you as is appropriate when this conversation finishes in a year. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and they'll <sighs> finish their conversation, which actually only takes you know, like 20 minutes, but then right. and afterwards they will approach you. Uh, right. Dear right. beloved traveler and friend, I see you have come from impossibly far away. Yes, uh, from the uh, land to the... Uh, they call it Arcadia, but I guess it's uh, Arcadia West. Mm. Using the terminology of this land. Yes. Yeah, That's I, most unusual. Cause... By how? By what means did you arrive in our beautiful oh, forests? Oh, uh, well, I landed at uh, Bastion... Uh, my, it was a ship. I was in, uh, yes. My. I didn't realize that all the Krakens had been slain yet. They were. The ship's gone. How unfortunate for you. So yeah. you're marooned. Yeah. And uh, I'm finding the uh, level of civilization lacking compared to my homeland. You certainly must be. I... So I'm... Because my history in book... I've read on this land, obviously end at a certain point. 
because last I heard those two great empires, and then now it's a jungle. Yes. Like, what what happened to the empire of Necrot? And ah. um, well, you see, well, dear traveler, Necrot beloved was... visitor, fifteen hundred years ago, the storms came, and the mountains, they rose. Land sank beneath the sea. Our territory was mostly spared, for we are the gods chosen, and we had done no ill, nothing wrong, so our lands um, were mostly left intact. Well, the elven island to the uh, northeast of here completely sunk in the uh, sea, just saying. You probably know that from the uh, Feywild stuff, yeah. Hmm. They, they give you absolutely no reply to that. Just <coughs> tight-lipped, like, All right. grimace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, I'm um, just wondering, like, do those yeah. settlements still exist? Acropolis, Perth Home, Necrot, Porpheus, Shelter Bay. Not a one survived. Not even Shelter Bay survived. Not a one. You sure about that, Neil? Okay. I stand by. I stand by the statements of these characters. Yep. All right, because it, it does still exist, but I'm just saying these elves are telling me the other way. I'm I'm giving you the information these right, elves are I'm giving you. I'm just making sure <laughs> I'm I'm asking the correct. <laughs> okay. No, are the ruins still there, or are they decayed over the past uh, age of those places? If I'm, you uh, wish to a see them, you should visit myself. them yourself. That's the only way to truly experience them. I, like in my book, I have the map I was going to give to the IU Council. And I show, yeah, this is what I know of the ancient land. Is it somewhat accurate? The ancient land? Yeah, because like I, I was going to give IU a copy of the old map and they said, oh, we don't care about it. Uh, they will look at it, and there's, like, this bemused, like, let me see if I can bring a, do I have a small version of this map that I can bring in here? Oh, uh, the hex map? It's do. better than the hex map. There go. <laughs> he will produce a map that looks something like this. Where are we? It will ever load. It'll, it'll come in. <clears throat> it'll come in. <clears throat> Promise you. Huzzah! Oh, yeah. Yeah, here's the old map. Yeah. Um, so as you can tell, you know, most of what was what is now Bravo is gone. Or was Bravo yeah, is gone. So, um, something half's gone. Yeah, so they'll look at this this war gaming map that you have for your, your own yeah. games and, and look at the vast stretches of planes and sort of chuckle to themselves and say, Um, this is this is deeply out of date. I would not rely upon this map for anything, except for no uh, no, nothing. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> well, no, no. But Porpheus no. is almost right, but it's a swamp now. <laughs> yeah. So the Wizard Academy is gone, I assume, that I put out on the map. All settlements were ruined. All former civilizations destroyed. Hmm. Why are you so interested in how things were an impossible time ago, a time that predates even our eldest members? Mm. Well, I am uh, somewhat of a folklore history expert of human accuracy, obviously, but um, I am known as a sage of uh, cartography in my land. And as mm. I'm marooned here, I need to apply my skill, my knowledge for this land instead. Mm -hmm. I roll. Eh, pass. But. Well. I... How may we be of assistance to you, traveler from so far away that we rarely see? Yeah. I'm just wondering, like, um, because our history books ended at a certain point, did the two empires ever, human empires, ever defeat one another, or they, was it a stalemate to the breaking? Hmm. One elf will look to the other. The other will look back. 
We'll both pause for a moment. Um, they'll exchange some words in Elven, which will take yeah, you know, th uh, three or four minutes. And then the first one to speak will say, I, we seem to recall the history that they fought constantly. And one would destroy the other and another would rise again and that it was mm. um, an endless tug of war. But to be <laughs> truthful and fair, these are old stories about things that were never that important to our people. Mm. Um, it may be that what we know as the East and the West were, were mm. not two eternal empires constantly in war, but an empire would conquer everything and then it would divide itself into an East and West half who would then fight itself again. And then mm. one side would win and then five human generations later divide once more it's hard to follow well it's hard to know the details of human mongering societies from six to thirty lifetimes ago mm. yeah unfortunately what do you think of this current the human empire of yaka if it's <laughs> <laughs> Are they calling themselves an empire now? Oh, that's so yeah, cute. Yeah, the Empire of Arcadia, I'm told. Oh, that's just the cutest thing I've ever seen. They can't even... The other one puts a gentle hand. My apologies, I was about to speak out of turn. We respect well, I, I'm the not growing from empire Yaka. of Yaka. Freely. No, of course not. Uh, we respect the growing empire of Yaka as long as they respect our boundaries, and we shall endeavor to make sure that is clear, but we give um, them encouragement and strength if they wish to elevate their status of life from subjects of the of nature to stewards of nature. Hmm. We pray so they guide themselves stewards correctly. among their number then have the if only steward. Yeah, where I'm from, only, there are only human druids. Human druids? Yeah. They're, what an unusual concept. I guess there's some half-elf ones as well, but yeah. Tell me, stranger, you have a... How long have you been here? Six months. And your oh, pages like, are uh, legible and have not decayed. Uh, yeah. uh, why this has is the a heat and mold... Spell. It's a are treated you, book. Are no, you sir. No, I'm just the opportunist. The mathematician. Do you know anything about the concept of fractals? Y yes. L well, let's roll it. They but, will yes. sit and talk with you about the beauty of pine cones and yep, of broccoli stems and the, the fractal nature and how it spins forever, and no matter how mm. close you get, it's always the same thing, and how that is the essence of all life. And we're all fractals at the end of the day, and we need to remember that we are all... And they just... They give you a long speech about the how the essence of reality and nature is fractals, and you gotta keep, like, a long view because it's just gonna be the same shit over and over again for 10,000 years, and so you gotta, yeah. like, lean into the fractal nature of reality. And it's, like, sort of hippie propaganda... And sort of like stoner freshman in high college who's taken one philosophy class. And also sort of like, wait a minute, but I actually think they're trying to say something super valuable here. But they're like over the top, like almost condescending conversational tone makes it difficult to grasp what they're really trying to say. Um, mm. And can you give me a, wow, that's, a, that's an incredible mathematics check. Yeah, 32. Uh, yeah, I guess what they're saying actually does make a lot of sense to you. That, mm. you know, life will continue for a very long time and you had better plan out your society to last for the duration of the the lifetime of the planet. Otherwise, you're mm. going to have a bad time. Yeah. And that, that's essentially what they're trying to tell you is to be an environmentalist, but they're trying to tell you by talking about broccoli and pine cones because that's mm. what makes sense to them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Fucking else. So I get sidetracked and all else. that and get don't get any mission related information, obviously, because I just get 
roast in the math. Oh, they love the math. Okay, we're gonna yeah. we're gonna flip around. Um, no, we're gonna flip see. around to, to Daniel. <laughs> Daniel, what, you're coming what? to the money. Not Daniel, Hank. <laughs> Hank, there you, you go. come into the moneyed bar, <laughs> right? And this place that is definitely the nicer. The money this... bar. No, it's right in there. It's called. Um... It's called My Fair Maiden. And uh, okay. it's the sort of place that has a one gold cover charge to get in. <laughs> it's a great name, Connor. <laughs> They're all good names, Brent. <laughs> he just comes right in my fair maiden. <laughs> well, I had him put the ball together. Walked right into that one, Neil. All right, I just—it's fine. Somebody did. Yeah, you get well, you go. Not any muscle, though. You go to the tavern. <laughs> It has a cover charge of a gold. That's how they keep out the riffraff. All right, that's fine. We pay their... We pay their charge. <laughs> All right, you step on in. It's a, a lovely place. Okay, well... <laughs> inside my fair maiden? I was going to say... I was going to begin to describe the location, and I had to stop myself because... Knowing my players and potential audience, you would have bulked the description. It's fine. It's only one gold vendor. It can't be that nice. It's fine. It's fine. It's a lovely place. We don't need to talk about it. Um, comfortable chairs, good seating, nice lighting, magic lanterns hanging from the ceilings. Um, you know. A little bit of uh, actual stained glass, which is like a huge rarity here. And it's not like on the outside of the building. It's like stained glass that has been put around a, a glowing orb, which then will shed colored light on everything. And it's like, it's like hanging from the ceiling as the thing here because glass is almost impossible to get in Bravo. Um, so scratch that, is there, it is, is impossible it... to get in Bravo. And so this stained glass piece here is either ancient or imported or who knows what, but... Not sure impossible. is Brady. Emrek teleported here. Pretty easily, too. So is there just one in the center? Is it, you know, like a big disco ball of stained glass? It's, um... Octagonal? Hex... Fucking the... toroidal? The... It's like a toroidal shape? Is that, is that the right word? I don't know. It's like a circle, right? Like a, yeah. if you, it's a cylinder with the tops and bottoms chopped off, and then it's like stained glass around the side, and then a okay. light in the middle of it. Yeah, so white you. light shines down and up, colored light shines out the sides. So it's just a cylinder. Sure. Yeah. It's fine, Connor. <laughs> it's a great cylinder. Is a great word. Okay. I mean, a torus would be like a donut. Yeah. Well, it's bent on the edges, leaning in. But I didn't. I didn't have all the words. It didn't matter the shape of the. It's a piece of stained glass. Okay. The glass is colored. Words That's are hard. <laughs> words are hard. Words are so hard. Yeah. So we're gonna start looking around uh, inside of here. Uh, and you mm -hmm. said, is it like just individual tables sitting around, or like how is what's the actual like uh, furniture layout of said place? Yeah. Um, there are booths around the sides. There's tables throughout the middle. There's a stage on one end. There's a bar on the other end. Behind the bar, um, there seems to be some sort of kitchen. Behind the stage on the left and right are a pair of doors that go to some uh, places that you can stay, like in rooms that you'd have to check from the bar. There's an exit out back that goes to a, a series of like private um, poop stalls. Uh, which mm -hmm. will just drop your poop and your waste into the creek that runs underneath it. So it actually has like running toilets, which is fantastic. Um, yeah. And uh, there are cocktail waiters and waitresses coming around in, you know, outfits that show off all the appropriate assets while still appropriately, um, you know, hiding anything that might be uh, <clears throat> immodest and taking your drink. So, you know, there'll be a, a guy in the equivalent of booty shorts coming up with like a shirt, no shirt on, but like a bow tie and like, you know, good muscles. And he'll walk over to you with a serving tray on one hand and ask if you would like anything to drink. Mm. Oh, so absolutely. But you know, I appreciate your time. I'm actually going to head over to the bar. I think I'm going to sit there for a second. Oh, yep. And he'll motion you over and you can walk away. The bartender will come on over 
Um, she's got like a short top and a short skirt, and um, she'll lean over the bar and gently gaze into your eyes and ask you what you'd like to drink. I'm gonna stare back for just a second. <laughs> it's a long second as you you gaze at the oh, it's just entirely gone. The dogs are winning. <clears throat> they always do. You know, it was a long second as we stared at each other. Got lost in the elf eyes. You know, it happens to the best of us. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, I'll go, uh, you know, what do we have to drink tonight? Do we have a, uh, a seasonal special or what's going on? The papaya wine is just finished its fermenting. Oh, you know, I'll have one of those then. I'm, thank you. She will go into the counter, pull out a barrel, uh, or put a, a, a a mug underneath the barrel and bring you a nice big glass of papaya wine and um, she will tell you that when you're ready um, you can leave your four silver pieces on the table for her all right sounds good um so talking about this bar is there a side that's in the optimal seating location aka next to the wall at the end um, that's the stage. So it's oh, kind of a long okay. room, and then one side is stage with doors on either end, and the other side is yep. bar, and then front and back. Yes, yeah. front and back. So like one side, bar and stage are opposite sides of each other, yes? Yeah, and the bar and stage are on the short sides, and then the long sides oh. are the entrance and the exit. Right, so on the bar, like, is there, like, if you're sitting at the bar, you could go to, like, the far left wall or the far right wall? I'm just gonna doodle. Okay, I like doodles. Doodles, doodles are, are great. Um, we're going to doodle in the South Sea. We're going to okay. doodle in the color black. Okay, beautiful. Um, Found the doodle. Okay. All right, so there's the doodle. Um, mm -hmm. Here is the entrance. Yep. Um, and then there's like a pair of doors on the stage side. And then the stage comes out and around and then back in. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there is a bar that runs like this with just a little bit of seating. Uh, and then you've got like, you know, um, booths okay. that do this sort of thing along the edges. Okay. So my question is, is right here where the purple is, is there a, a stool over there? Yeah, totally. Okay. That's where I want to be at. I want to be in the corner so I can see most of everything. Great. Yeah. Beautiful doodles. Yep. And then uh, uh, we have also have some tables that run down the middle. Okay, I follow what's going on now. Cool. Uh, so as we're sitting there looking out, uh, how full is this place? Oh, there's probably room for maybe 60 people to sit. Okay. 3, 4, 5, 6, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Wait a minute, is that right? 17 times. Oops. Uh, yeah, there's probably room for like 60 people if it was packed and everyone was seated. Um, yeah. but it's not even half full today. Okay, so we're sitting at like 50%, so about 30 people are hanging out. Yeah. Okay, so as we kind of look around through here, um, is there anybody who's... How many How many people are in booths versus how many people are on tables? Sorry, Everyone's in booths. Tables Everyone, seem yeah. to be uninterested. Who wants to sit in a table in the middle of the fucking room when you could sit at a booth? There are a couple True. of uh, solo people at the bar, but all the groups are in booths. Okay. Um, is there any booth that's just popping off? People having a great time? Absolutely. Yeah, there's a booth where there are some real drunk goblins um, talking with a, a human. Okay, so we got the goblin and human table are popping off. Yeah. Um, are there any other tables that are playing any games? Uh, no, no gaming going on whatsoever. Boring businessmen everywhere except for the goblin and human table. Wow, that's... And they're the only goblins in the bar. Interesting. All right, you know what? We're going to sit here and we're going to talk to our, our bartender friend whose name... You no, know, I just... I forgot to get your name. What's your name? Um, her name... Hmm. Her name is Beryl. Arrow. Mm -hmm. This is a half elf elf. No, it's a it's a human. Human, human woman uh, name. Human woman, human name. Named Barrel. 
Okay. Yeah, but you don't. No one knows this because these people are illiterate and they don't spell. But it's B E R Y L. Mm, Different okay. sort of barrel. It's like beryllium barrel. Okay. It's exotic okay. and cool. It's not lame. Honor, it's not lame. I see that look you're giving me. It's a great name. It, no, no, this this is fine. Like you're assuming things. You said B E R L. I was like, oh, B E R Y L. I was like, oh, like beryllium. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so Beryl, you know, I'm looking around here. It seems like the uh, the goblins and the humans are the only people really having a good time in here. You know, what is uh, what is everybody else about here? Are they just doing business, or they, uh, you know, they don't seem to be throwing any games, or you know, having a good time. This is a lovely lounge for people who are tired of their days to come relax, find good company, drink well-made beverages, be served good food in the company of lovely sights of all kinds to be had. Yes, okay. It tends to be a more gentle, soft place. Not okay. such a, a gaming... If you are interested in a place where games are played, I could point you down the street to one such location. Oh, no, you know, maybe later tonight, you know? I just, I came in here because it seemed like this is where all the, uh, the people who had a lot to do around the city came. You know, are there a lot of people in here who, you know, control the city? I mean, that's crazy, all those dogs have some... I'm sorry, I couldn't really quite hear a word you were saying there. Yeah, over the dogs outside? Yeah, that's wild. Uh, mm -hmm. I was just saying, um, you know, if everyone's coming in here to kind of hang out and have a good time, uh, man, just... just... <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, you know, just got to, you know, deal with the dogs. <laughs> They're lovely creatures. Uh, couldn't live without them. You couldn't live without them, especially the young ones. They're the best. Mm. Uh, um, especially with the other young ones around. It's really good. Mm -hmm. um, so what I was saying was, um, it seems like this is where all the people who, you know, have a lot to do around the city come. Like, is, is this the case, you know? It just seems like everyone's kind of even keeled here, but, you know, there's got to be somebody who's more in charge than other, right? I mean, someone's got to kind of hang out more towards the top of the establishment, no? If you're asking about people who run the town... You can find them on the other side of the river. Well, of course, uh, you can always find the elves on the other side of the river. You know, they like to stay over there where their kind's at. No, I understandable. But I'm saying, you know, on, but they're running the other side of the river and this side of the river. But there's got to be some people who also kind of run this side of the river. You know, I, I don't see as many elves over here. So, you know, how does that work out? The leadership is entirely of elven descent. They maintain their dwellings and businesses um, beyond the river. And we here stay on this side. One might expect, if you come from elsewhere, a more traditional hierarchy here in the unpredictable jungles, um, away from the safety of seas and high walls, life is often short. <clears throat> and no man rules for long. Of course, not for long, but you know, there's always one who's ruling. What would you like to know? You seem to be beating around the bush. Well, you know, uh, at the High Maiden, it's always, I've heard it's best to beat around the bush. Uh, so I was just wondering, you know, we, we're kind of from out of town, you know, kind of a long way away, mm -hmm. uh, very far away, really. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's just always interesting. You come to a new place, just learn about what's going on, the happenings. It's just kind of weird to me that, you know, it seems like outside in the jungle, there was crazy jungle monsters that just mm -hmm. wanted to murder everyone. Mm -hmm. And there's not very many guards here. Uh, you don't have any walls, which is, you know, to me... That's kind of weird, because it seems mm. like they're just coming in and eat everybody. Well, so as how I does said, that work out? Our elven friends across the river take care of all security matters. Um, you won't see mm -hmm. them, but they're there. 
outside the wall, outside the, the perimeter of town. Um, they keep everything safe and sound. And within, if there are struggles, well, they inevitably end eventually. It's um, quite a... What's the term? Um, live and let live style of life here. Oh, that's real interesting. You know, just it's always kind of curious. You know, I had a, oh man, I had a really good goblin friend on the way over here. And uh, the people up in uh, IU just weren't a fan of them. You know, they were looking down on the goblin people. But I see over there, there's a bunch of goblins. I mean, do y'all differentiate between the, uh, the city goblins and the jungle goblins here? To a limited extent, although I believe we are more tolerant than others. Uh, the merchants and travelers come, speak more decidedly in terms of city and jungle as if separate races or sub-races. Here, a uh, city, town, goblins simply refer to those that have decided to settle within the borders and leave the ways of the jungles behind. Uh, they are here and they occupy their fair share and as long as they behave and are ordinary functional members of society. We see no reason to judge them for their sights and smells. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. So they could own that biggest house over there, you know? The goblins could do that? She, like, looks at the wall in the direction of the house that you're pointing and looks back at you and ponders and says... I know of no law prohibiting such things, but laws are kept by the elves, and I'm not a lawyer. I, I couldn't recite to you the legal code, but I see uh, no reason why not. So they Perhaps can just, just buy there. it from whoever owns it? Who owns that one, the biggest one? Shrugs? Um, you would have to ask. I'm sure its ultimate ownership rests in the hands of one of our sylvan friends and it might be rented for a, a hundred years by a, a local oh interesting okay very interesting all right, right well you know it. well thank you so, thank you so much uh mm -hmm. barrel you know i really appreciate it and you know would you gonna, like another papaya i would actually like six more of them please you can leave the 30 silver here i'll bring them to yeah. you would you like them all at once or one at a time I would like them all at once, this way, and I'm gonna go to the table where the people are having fun, the goblins right. and the human. Excellent. I'm gonna bring a round of drinks, because that's the way uh, you do things. Yep, she will pull up six papayas, she'll get one of the waitresses to bring them on over, and um, someone will come and set six papaya wines before you and the humans and the goblins, and uh, when they see you bringing drinks, they will grab them, swig from them first, and then say, how do you do? Nice to meet you, my name is, and introduce themselves. The goblins belch loudly in the process, and the human gives them kind of like gives the table a nudge and like a watch okay. yourself, guys. Um, mm -hmm. and the goblins grin widely and introduce themselves. They leave out their limp, flappy, slightly webbed hands in your direction, okay. <clears throat> with uh, slight growls, mm -hmm. like friendly yeah, growls. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely understandable. So looking around at the uh, the goblins and everybody who's hanging out, did it look like the human was kind of like being the chaperone of the group? Absolutely. It looks like these goblins all work for the human. The human's like in the okay. center. The goblins are all on the sides. When the human like says something, they all pay clear attention. Maybe they don't work for him. Maybe they look up to him. He's definitely a leader of some kind. Yeah, he's the goblin leader, man. All right, so, you know, I'll shake everybody's hand. And uh, the human's name was, sorry. Human hasn't introduced himself. Oh, no, he did introduce himself. His name is um, Boar. 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 Well, Boar, nice to meet you. Uh, how do you, uh, how do you do? I do well. How do you do? I do very well. It seems Splendid. As you. Splendid. Like gesturing around to, you know, obviously the goblins. So you, uh, you travel through the jungles, I see? Oh, well, my, my friends here have friends who travel the jungles for us. Ah, I see. So they, uh, they're your intermediaries, would you say? <coughs> Translators is my preferred way of speaking um, about it. Yes. You know, everyone has their own way of speaking. That's what's important. 
Are these so, jungle goblins or city goblins? These are city goblins. They are wearing clothing. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> and that's okay. So, uh, what, uh, what do you do? Uh, what trade do you do with the goblins then? Ah, they are fur collectors. Uh, fur and uh, feather okay. collectors. And uh, I trade in clothing and pillows. And occasionally pillows. down comforters. You know, that's, uh, that's a good trade to have in here. Mm -hmm. I'm interested that they would need down comforters. It seems very warm here all the time, but, you know, maybe the elves get cold. Very dainty creatures. UL, the down comforters are a favorite of the dwarves who live in these cold mountain Ooh. mines from time to time. They're the primary customer of the down comforters. I see. That makes many, much sense. Yes. Do you, so do you So you never travel to see the dwarves themselves, though? Well, they travel to me. To Why goblins? would I travel to them? Oh, you never know. Sometimes you go to someone else's home. Sometimes I come to your home a little back and forth, you know? Solvang's a splendid place. Wonderful yeah. place. Half timber houses, nice little <laughs> river, protection from monsters, plenty of travelers. It's the second largest hub in all of Arcadia, don't you know? Um, I'm quite, quite happy here. Uh, never leaving the protection of my gracious hosts. And then he'll ah. take his drink and raise it in front of the goblins and say, uh, to the elves. And they, the goblins will, to the elves. Together they all drink. Okay, okay. So we'll, we'll do our little to the elves drink. Um, mm -hmm. And then I'll kind of keep pestering a little bit about the dwarves and go, so did they come here recently? Have you seen them soon? Are they coming Damn. back anytime? Oh, they're not a monoculture, sir. Each dwarf is free to go about their life as they will. Um... Well, there I should say be dwarves in this town this one very dwarf, day. One dwarf couldn't make it through the uh, jungles by themselves, could they? Be a Perhaps mighty dwarf. Not. Yeah. No, I, I, usually they use an intermediary. There's a traveling company that will come from Solvang to the, the dwarven outpost nearby and, and do most of the legwork for them, since their legs are so very short. Uh, but every now and then, a, a group will make it out this way. I think, in fact, I saw a group of dwarves in town earlier today. Ah, fantastic, fantastic. Well, you know, I, I wish you well on your fur trade and your down comforter trade, and uh, good day. Good day to you too, sir. All right, and we're gonna leave and go try to find the party. All right, it was... it's late. The party will eventually meet up, I think the next morning, unless someone else had something to do tonight. Uh, they meet Mr. me in the bar with my guy. Yeah, yeah that's it. And the whole party will reconvene with deformed Cass. Is that his name? Cass? Yeah. Cass. This is Cass, yes. Yeah. Cass, yeah. Deformed Cass. Cass. This one's Cass. This one's Cass with a K. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying it was Tass, the NPC last week. Was there an NPC named Tass, Tass. last week? Yeah. Then I am on point with my naming. It is a similar culture. They should have similar names. Well done, Neil. Yeah. Doing terrific. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> You'll have two weeks you ago. Should, uh, you should move that object, whatever you're looking at. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I know you don't name things based upon what you see on your desk. Mm hmm. Cass is named after Cass the Minotaur from the Dragonlance books. He was a oh. sailor on a ship. Um, and I don't remember why, but he was like a minor character in one book, but he was like a cool minor character. And so someone wrote a whole book about how he became the Minotaur that he was before he was like the assistant on the boat. Um, and that's where I got the name Cass. I, I might have gotten the name Task from, no, no, Task comes from Tasselhoff Burfoot, a different Dragonlance character. So Dragonlance uh. is on the mind, <laughs> but like different <laughs> books, different stories. Neil's read, read one book series. <laughs> I have read way too many. He's read a single books. book. <sighs> so many, too many. Uh, you guys are good here, and Cass will be uh, chilling, regaling Sunny with stories of his homeland, Ember's Keep. Oh, I'm glad you all came to join me. This guy right here, his name's Cass, and um, he's going to take us to Ember's Keep. Oh, that's interesting. We, you found a guide to Ember's Keep. That's, that's yes. awesome. You know, it's interesting. I thought maybe we'd see the doors, but if, if you want to go to Ember's Keep, I mean, I, I guess we can do that, you know? Well, you're the leader. Make the decision. I just found well, a guide. You have dwarves at Ember's Keep. You have dwarves down there? Yes. 
The rest is ah. the dwarves. That's Sell the stones that make up the this. bones. Planet. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see you found a really good guy here, uh, Sonny. You you're oh, very what? confident in this one's ability? He's super ugly. I give him a <laughs> wink. I'm just back oh, oh. <laughs> He's the ugliest man I've ever seen. I'm gonna kind of lean over to Bill, like, Bill, can you, uh, can you, like, check this guy? See if he knows how to get us through, through the jungle. I mean, I don't know too much about how to get down there other than some very basic directions. Look, I'm just looking for, like, a, I'm looking for a little, like, check, you know, just to see if he knows what he's talking about. I just, I don't know what I'm talking about, so I was hoping you knew what you were talking about. Maybe, you know, you could do little ranger things, or I don't know. The rangers, <sighs> you came from the last place, they seemed like they knew what they were doing, and they almost got eaten by everything. So... Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I can see what I can do. So, Cass, you say you can take us to Ember's Keep? You were going to take me there, I thought. Well, I mean, you can lead us there. Oh, yes, yes, I know the way. We go between the mountains, and we keep going between mountains until until there's more in front of us. Um, and then when we, we're in the bamboo, and we touch more stone, uh, then then we go to where the sun rises. Wake up one morning, we see where the sun is, and we go there. And once we hit the small ocean, then we follow it all the way to the big ocean. And then we walk along the sea. <gasps> but that's as far as I'll tell you. Because after that, it's a secret. So what you're saying is after we turn east and we hit the ocean... Uh, we keep going till the swamp, and then you'll guide us through the swamp into Ember's Keep. Oh. Ow. You so brilliant and so pretty at the same time. <laughs> you know, some of us are just gifted. I find it's my amazing sense of style and flannel. Mm. Or plaid, correction. Mm-hmm. doesn't look um, pleased. He looks unhappy. Joke's on him. I've got eight int. <laughs> <laughs> That's I'm playing him for a fool, but I only have nine charisma. <laughs> well, you haven't beaten both cases. Tass has uh, seven int and seven charisma, unfortunately. Nice. 15 con nice. though it's pretty good classic classic Ooh. guy um all right so how many how many times have you made this journey before this is my fourth time in solvang he'll say and he'll hold up his entire hand which has but four fingers on it about four fingers are they the same length fingers or are they like is there like one that's enough no he's got like a thumb and then he's got like three fingers and he's missing a fourth finger um, and I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it's the middle three. It was. It's just a quick yeah, okay. flash, and then it's gone. So it's hard to tell. Oh, sure. Uh, but it's definitely a thumb and three fingers. Okay. Four. That's just good to know. Four yeah. times. Okay. What sort of uh, creatures have you encountered on your way up here? On your way back. Opening the encounter table. Well, I spoke the beautiful lady here about the sharp tooth that ate my cleric cleric for whom i came to get the medicine cleric of what of the gods which one Not me all of them <laughs> all of them who would be a cleric to but one god well how would that ever help you in your life Unless all you did was one thing for all your days. Perhaps a halfling could be a cleric to Taran. But even then, they would need Nadinus. Campos. And Eris. So, uh, you just have a whole bunch of clerics here to everybody? You, they don't, uh, specialize? What? <laughs> they don't, uh, yep. pick one and stick with it? Why? 
I'll explain to him about how in Solemn, uh, people, you know, usually cleric to one god. What? What nonsense is this? I'll tell him about Anton, the Velthara cleric who slayed many a beast. Sounds we don't know a what terrible, happened to him. miserable life, devoting yourself to the concept of vengeance? Does Anton not know the saying, those who live by the sword shall die by the sword? Does he not know the saying that vengeance begets vengeance? Does he not we know really the know saying that those who kill their brothers will be killed by their sisters? We haven't seen him since uh, they killed Scoria, so... Mm, I perhaps he did not survive. Perhaps what is the national... he was killed by... Sc what is a Scoria? I'll explain it to the dragon. What is the national uh, thought on what happened to the brothers? Um, three great heroes went out, two came back, third one never left the mountain. Some probably, people say he Scoria was raptured. Some people say he was killed by Scoria. Uh, what do they say don't about know what it. Some people say he was raptured by the gods for his great deeds. Um, others say that he has oh, a holy nice. quest that he's been taken off to. Some people re uh, relate it to the disappearance of clerics across the area, that like he was assassinated in or around the time that he was supposed to fight Scoria because a lot of clerics were killed. Um, and I think the, the official statement is just like, we're not going to talk about it. And so there's just rampant wild rumors. As for Tyrael, <clears throat> um, he does not have the greatest of reputations. He inherited he took over a kingdom that was like yeah. in a really really shitty spot and then he did it for a year and then he just fucking bounced without saying anything to anyone so he's kind of got the reputation of like great hero great hero did all these great things and then when the times actually got hard and he couldn't handle it he Fuck ran off. away yeah mm -hmm. people are kind of pissed uh think of him like um oh who was the king before queen elizabeth's father it was queen elizabeth's father's brother um, and he was the king for a long time, and then he wanted to marry an American woman, but she was like, first off, an American, and she was divorced, and so everyone was like, you can't marry an American divorcee, you're the king of England, for Christ's sake. Yeah. And he said, fuck you, I'm gonna marry this chick. And so he, like, uh, uh, absconded the throne? No. Abdicated? Abdicated the throne, <laughs> and his reputation has been in the shitter ever since. So Tyrael's walking down that same path right now. Early Base. days, but like, he was only king for a year, Neil. The point still stands. Yeah. Ariel Edward was only VIII king for a year. Was... Yeah, I'm just saying Edward VIII wasn't a king for ages. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yep. So that's that's that. Um, anyway, you all have Cass. Yeah. And he's here. Hi, he's Cass. got equipment to bring back to Ember's Keep. Um, Got a character sheet now. He even has a token. Should all, probably be with the dwarves good. before we go. I told you we have dwarves down near Ember's Keep. Yes, these might be the same dwarves. They might be going to Ember's Keep as well. The more, the merrier for the uh, for the road. Safety in numbers. All right. Well, I, you know, I see no reason not to take him. They do, and yeah. your numbers are the perfect ones to protect us. What are my numbers? Wonderful. Oh, well, numbers are... What, what are they? I uh, yeah, at least a 15 in con. <laughs> that means at least 9 HP. Thanks. <laughs> nice. All right. Well, then. Party, you've made a friend. You've yeah, rested you've for a, a couple of days here in town. You're going to head off to Ember's Keep. Why don't we take a Not break? Not that it's important, but how much uh, HP do we recover during our <laughs> what our couple days? Here? Uh, well, you get one HP back for tonight's rest because yesterday uh -huh. you were still rowing and hiking and, and traveling, uh -huh. and today you've got rest. Uh, if you would like, if you, anyone is actually low on HP, I don't know if anyone is, Thank you so can uh, purchase the service of clerics in town who will heal you. Oh, very nice. Yes. How, how much do they want? They will take um, a gold coin. No, they will take three gold coins for one Cure Light Wound spell. All right, give me one. 
Excellent. They're going to heal you 1d8 plus 3, yeah, I, I can't believe, wait. is the number. 10. <laughs> okay. Hey, that's Ooh, pretty good. Nice. That's not bad at all. Uh, minus 3, that's 6. Minus 1 is 5. How much HP do we get for 30. being here? You said 3? 1. 30. Only 1? One. 1 per night, uh, buddy. Uh, 70. She made change at the bar, yes, in silver. Yeah. I'm at 35. Should I pay three gold? I I went from 28 to 32. Okay, I'm I'm going for max. There's no. I'll pay the three gold. Okay, you get nine. Looking pretty. I'm max. All right. Uh, All right, party. Not max. Uh, Uh, number looks good. Um, someone shell out another what five gold for another night of in sleeping here. Gold a person. And I um, got it. Okay. I've got no money. <laughs> when we come back from our break, our party will leave Solvang <laughs> and go to Ember's Keep in the company of Cass, who's not a Minotaur. He's a Mongrelman. And if you don't know what the race of Mongrelman is in 5e, it's Mongrel Folk. I'm going to give you a quick picture before we go because I really just love the way the second edition books draw their creatures and characters. Not as good as the Goblin, but the Mongrelman. The Mongrelman's pretty Ooh. good. Our guy's not this deformed. One. But he he's pretty good. Mm. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah. Oh, nice. Look at that. There's like a lion a, a paw and there's like a horse hoof or something, and then like a a human arm and like a yeti arm and like a weird fit. It's a great Mongolman. What we're dealing and with. And he's nice. So nice. I mean he's And dumb. to think they did this all with just inbreeding. Yep. <laughs> this is what your guy looks like. Uh wait, wait, hold on. Gotta bring it into frame. <laughs> Brave. Oh yeah, Brave. beautiful. There we go. There's your guy. Oh nice. Yeah, look at those weird toes. Look at those weird <coughs> toes. What's going on over near Yuma? Look at that's a mess <laughs> over there. Yeah, and this backwards arm. Mm-hmm. And this hairline. I mean, could you imagine someone having this hairline? It's it's just ugly. It's so bad. Uh, so we'll catch you on the other side of this break. Bye bye, everyone. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Rise of Drekas, Chapter 3. It's time. It's time for the party to set out. And before we set out, we're going to no, do... I've got another day of surveying to do. Okay. Yeah, there we're going to... Gonna... While he's doing that, he's surveying the next day. We're going to talk to the uh, dwarves, if we can find them. Yeah, yeah. They're not hard to spot. I mean, they're, they're a little hard to spot, because you got to you know get on your knees to look around. Um, but they're, they stand out like sore thumb once you do get to the right height. Oh um, my goodness! There's... I'll say to the dwarf, your your beard, it's so much it's so much longer than the ones I've ever seen before. I say and to the dwarf, and birthday too. Wow, you you guys. The secret you're... is putting a little bits of bronze rods in the beard, so that way it fills it out, and when you bind it together, it adds a thickness. Could I could I maybe touch it? Absolutely not! What do you think I am, a common harlot? No, no, no! I, I, I didn't think I, I didn't think so. You see, I, I'm not from around here. I uh, give them the spiel, and I story tell on how I am a warrior princess from Solemn. And now, uh, here's, a lot of yeah. these other people will buy warrior princess hook, line, and sinker, right? We haven't had yep. to make many checks. That's correct. They don't know shit. They take it. But the dwarves here, they still have a fairly hierarchical, classical, traditional methodology. And when you say you're a warrior princess, they give you that dwarven look of like, I think you're trying to tell me a tall tale. And yeah, I will well, need you to pass me why, a... I'm going to give you a story-telling check. <laughs> or do you want charisma? It's the same thing. Um, the, what we're trying to do now is have you pass as a princess. So that's a charisma check. Okay. So it's, it's the same thing. It's the same role. Yeah, that's fine. <sighs> I just... I really want this one. I don't want many rolls. So I want a 17 on the natural dice... I'll take it. Ooh. Ooh, that's really good. Yeah, 28 for the recording. Good. Oh. Sorry, 
how to change some things. Um, that is a 28. That's a successful charisma check. And the dwarves give you the look up and down. And look at your face. And they look at your hands. And they look at your clothing. They look Hold at your on. shoes. If they look at our hands, they are going to see very calloused, farm-ridden hands. Like, this lady's been working on a farm with her kids mm -hmm. for the past, I don't know, yeah, 15 years. But you're a warrior princess. That's where the calluses come from, is the sword, not from necessarily the... Not from the hoe, right? That's no. true, mm. but she's also the first master, epic giga master ever, at because her level. father... She's not the first this, high at this master. Level, at this level, at yeah, this level. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so the dwarves will take you the look up, and they'll take you the look down, and you pass your charisma check with flying colors, and one of them will give a bit of a grunt and be like, hmm, they sure don't make princesses across the sea like we make them here. Not a, oh, hey. not a single one of our princesses would be spotted dead outside their house without at least a thousand gold worth of jewelry. Are you from a poor kingdom? I mean, no disrespect. I'm just trying to understand. Uh, well... I'll show him my super fine sword. I'll, like, mm -hmm. unsheath it a little bit and, like, show it off. Mm -hmm. I'm always with this, but, um, we were on a boat and we crashed here. And now we're stuck. All of our riches into the sea. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm sorry to hear of your ill fate, ma'am. The jungles out here ain't fit for uh, a soul. Thank you, kind sir. You're not like the dwarves we have back at home. Our dwarves are nowhere near as fine as you. I know, and I'm being flattered, and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mind um, waiting here a second? My friend has um, some gems that we were looking to maybe sell. They're from our homeland. You might be I suppose I could let my dogs rest. All right. I'll bring back a drink, too. And I'll run inside to go get um, the gems from Hank. And Hank can come if he wants. Uh, you know, he's going to look at Sunny asking for the entire patch of gems and go, huh, <laughs> not this isn't happening. It is going to go you, over you, there. You don't need to. Yeah, come on. It's the dwarves. And I'll grab a drink and I think, bring it over. I think at this moment, maybe the whole party is here or yeah, I'm Daniel, not, you else. could be elsewhere yeah. if you wanted. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I wasn't sure exactly. I'm not doing what anything. I'm just saying like, I'll be probably very busy all day because I lost a lot of time talking about math. Oh God, the math, the fractals. Got it. Anyway, the, the other three of you end up talking with yeah. this dwarf who will introduce himself as uh, Ferris Ironstone. And these are, Ferris, hey? these, these are his uh, siblings. It's a common name. These are his uh, siblings. Um, Ferris, Gold. Illuminous, Gold. and uh, uh, Sulphurus <laughs> on Ironstone. What, Have no you just Cooper? got a periodic no, title in front of you? The, those other ones are still back in the mountain. They didn't come out. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I do have a periodic table in front of me. It came yeah, with a so. gooseneck <laughs> clamp that I bought, and now it sits on my desk. So, Ferris... How much, um, do you think these gems are worth anything? Uh, let me take oh. a good look at that. He'll take it out and he'll examine it for a little bit and he'll hand it to his, uh, brother, um, Sulphurus. We'll actually, uh, you know, get re you know, get into some good light, look at it, check its luster. It's not a clear stone, so he doesn't have to check its clarity. He'll, uh, <laughs> you know, close his eyes and feel the weight of it in his hand. Um, then he'll, like, kind of test it with his teeth. Um, he'll look back up at the lot of you and go. Will he do this for the rest of the Dungeon 13 Master that guy. we have? We what? show him one at the start. I'm sorry, I didn't okay. catch that there, Hank. Uh, I just was curious how many of these you wanted to bite. That's all. Uh, just the one. Although I prefer a random one to bite rather than the one you handed me. Oh. Well, you know. No, I don't let people stick their random hands into my bag. I'll be honest. I wouldn't want to put my hand in your bag. Last time I put my hand into a random bag, you'll never believe what I found in there. 
Well, last time I, I go see a play. I don't think that was a play. We're traveling to, um, I think Ember's Keep. You think? Also. Or you I know. Kind of shrug. We don't really know, um. We don't really know this land, so I, th I think that's where we're going next. Oof. Hands you back the, the gemstone and nods, and we'll speak in dwarven openly and plainly uh, before Wait. the lot review. I don't speak it, never mind. Yeah, none of you speak dwarven. Oh, do I get a chance? To, it's only read languages, right? I can't like Yeah. Them. Yeah, but what's your read languages chance? That's pretty trash. You convinced me out of it, so it's 5%. No, 20 Go ahead and roll it. 20%. Go ahead and roll it. 20. I'm sorry. It's, yeah. I no, can't. it's trash. You don't, you don't. Not, not, a, not a bit. Yeah. Not even close, baby. Yeah, it's, I can only roll at 97, you know. It's, for strength, absolutely not. It's a 2. For, mm. for read languages, it's a 97. Mm. <laughs> Well, uh, you ain't bad. Thanks. Fine specimens. Are you selling? Uh, potentially. Yeah. Where are you buying? We're here on a diplomatic mission. We didn't come with the mind of buying anything, but when you're in the market and you see something good, well, you gotta at least can give it a consideration. Stones like well, this ain't from round these places, rare enough indeed. But based on my observation of similar things, I, I expect there to be some small market back home in the Caracas Mountains. Well, what what would you call that small market worth to you? Hmm. I'll give you 66 gold for a single stone. I'll buy no more <sighs> than five. Well, that's an awful big price. When are you heading back to the Caracas Mountains? Uh, depends on how long it takes the elves to move their jaws. <laughs> <laughs> All right, elves, so... am I right? Fucking I elves, see. am I right? Yes, you are, lass. We'll, we'll see you in a few indeed. years then. I was going to say, about a decade, you'll be out of here. <laughs> you'll be an old woman by then. Uh, true. Uh, well. Still young enough to handle you. Can I give him a wink? Ah. <laughs> uh, well. No beard. Uh, Not hot. No, uh, what do we what do we feel like here, guys? Uh, higher or low? You can sell that's, one. that's a lot of gold. You got these for free. No. We did get these right. for free. All right, that's fine. We'll sell five of them. All right, you can exchange five stones for uh, for three hundred and thirty gold, yep. which will weigh six point. Um, I don't know, one five pounds? No. Ugh, 6.6 .6 pounds. Your your math does it. Don't worry. Oh, uh, I'm going to distribute some uh, some goldage to people. Well, the 50 gold you gave me put me over from base to light encumbrance. So, well, so you had to throw some from gold light on the coal? <laughs> so oh, like, uh, as you do the deal, Sunny will hold her hand out. I will give her a, if she's a low five then. I'm gonna hand a hundred gold to Mikaki. I'm not there. Yeah. Oh, you're not there. You have to and, walk and slowly to I'll find him. La I'll take <laughs> a bag. I say. I'll kind of laugh. Please. Fifty, please. You know, I like you so much. Have a hundred. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and that is still not enough. And I'll look over at Bill and oh. go, Bill. These bags. Well, we might as well. Much. Have a hundred. Might as well split. Oh, oh, oh. I'll hold my other hand out if you need. I can carry a lot. <laughs> I bet you can. I bet you can. But I... <laughs> I'm pretty much at almost my weight limit carrying all the um... equipment around. What do you mean Ferris? a weight limit? Sulfur. Bye. We're going to be heading to Amber's Keep. We're going to go through the forest. I'm so sorry, my lady. 
I wish there was a better way to get there, you know? <laughs> but through the forest we go. Through the forest we go. He shakes Thanks his for, head. Uh... It's a, a stinky ass place. Do you think it's worth visiting? No. I mean, based on him saying it's a stinky ass place, probably Ooh. stinks like ass. Well, I that it does. If you had to go to one, uh, Yuma or Ember's Keep, you'd go to Yuma. If I had to go to one, I'd go to Yuma. Yuma, uh, not in a swamp. Got clean water. What about the people? I've never been. I assume they're fine. As fine as, you know, outside folk could be. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe I should ask this first. Have you ever been to Ibris Keep? No, of course not. <laughs> Who would ever go there? Just, he just said how, sticks uh, like ass. Aye. My how cousins do down south about, tell me that. How do you guys feel about the four rangers of Yaka? Those Yaka has produced some of the greatest warriors ever to grace the lands of Bravo. I hate to admit it, but they surpass even our finest warriors. Is it one of them one of them? But what about Isn't the King of the Dwarves one of the Rangers? Maybe? I don't think the party's heard anything about that, but these well, guys I'm saying... saying the, the, yeah, that's what the guys are saying. Yeah. But you're trying yeah. to... You're trying to instill... Trying to to siphon off other lore and pretend it's going to work here? Because it, it might not. It might yes. all be gone. Maybe they're dead. Maybe <laughs> that character died. Maybe not. Right. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Um, but he's huh. definitely... We're saying that the... He's at least qualifying that these are different people um Got it. the the four rangers of yaka are, are i hate to admit it far superior to our warriors it's a great shame something huh. that will soon correct itself this anomaly hopefully i'm, but, I'm uh, sure you guys are training very hard <laughs> well, even though they're greater warriors than us, our tunnels give us plenty of protection. They're not a concern. And uh, soon they'll go off and get themselves killed anyway. Uh -huh. So it's fine. Well, I did have one question. You said you're here on a diplomatic mission, not a trade mission. Aye. You just... So you... What? Why would you deal with the elves? <laughs> There are old treaties between our peoples. Mm. Treaties that have not been called upon in generations. But it's worth keeping up. We're here to go through the appropriate religious rites, swear oaths to one another, shake hands, and make agreements. Religious rites? So these treaties were made under the, the power of the gods or something? Aye. In the light uh. of a stare. Artha, okay. Orasi, and Malchus, and Posa Nadinus. I'm going to walk over to the guy as they talk about this, who um, <clears throat> checked out the gems. Ah, Sulphurus, yeah. Yeah, and I'm going to whisper in Sulphurus's ear and ask him if he knows. And I'm going to... I assume Sunny would know. She will know. She knows a little bit about Mithril. She's not going to know you know much but mm -hmm. she's gonna kind of explain what mithril is i'm sure they have a different word for it here or they might not even have it at all um so i'm mm -hmm. gonna try and gauge if do you do you guys have mithril here like we do back home and i'll explain what the myth, what it is mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um he will tell you and gauge his reaction yeah give me a charisma check as you read his face I want to keep an eye on Sunny to see, to make sure she's not uh, doing anything too crazy over there. Is that 23 yours, Sunny? Yeah. Yeah, you can see that there's like a guarded, careful, very concerned, suspicious look on his face as you mention these things. 
Because, uh, well, of course, all denizens of the ground are well aware of the various minerals and metals that can be found. Unfortunately, this great land of ours is deficient in some of these types. Mithril is not common in these parts. Hmm. And if I ever had some, who would I talk to in your mountain to trade? If you had Mithril, processed or raw, you would come to our trading posts and ask there. They would appropriately direct you. Do you have some mithril, princess? She'll give him like a wry smile. Not on me. He will charisma check you. Now, dwarves uh, aren't known for their charisma. Passes with wow. flying fucking colors. 33. <laughs> Do you have any shit. charisma on you? Are you lying to him? <clears throat> she does not have any mithril on her. Or charisma. Yeah, mithril. However, she's technically, I don't think, lying. She's thinking more for the kingdom and the kingdom to use this mithril as like a bargaining chip. But you have mithril, in. right? Uh, I don't think she does. Okay. Okay. So you, there, there is zero mithril on your character sheet. There is... I, Unless I'm losing my mind, I don't think there's any okay, mithril on my okay. character sheet. Just checking. Okay, cool. Yeah, no. You're not there wouldn't be. <clears throat> All right. Um, she's not lying, but she's playing loose and fast where her mithril is. The kingdom has mithril back home. We right. just got a whole new mountain worth, and I think that if we could make an alliance with the dwarves by giving them mithril, mm. it would be maybe something that could work. Mm, clever. Clever. Okay. Uh, well, surveying can get done. You've bought, mm -hmm. you've uh, oh, I, bought some gold from the dwarves. Oh, yes. I wasn't quite done talking with the dwarf yet. Please, Woodsy Bill. Yeah, no. Yeah. So, so you you mentioned tunnels. Like everyone says, oh, the dwarves they live underground in tunnels and do all this stuff. But I, I'm sure. I. Oh, you act, you actually live. So is it just like a bunch of tunnels that spread out everywhere? Or like, wouldn't you get lost? You would or get it, lost. Well, yeah, you know, I'm I'm a woodsman, so I know my way around the woods. But you know, you take me underground, it, it's you know, it's, it's going to be real different. You can't see up mm. in the sky where the where the stars and the moon, and the sun goes. Aye, right. But like, wouldn't you guys get lost down there? Or is it dwarves? Right? Very special ears. You don't. They don't look like it from the outside, and we don't get credit for it. But our eardrums are extremely sensitive. There are our inner, we have multiple eardrums. Our innermost eardrum is extremely sensitive to pressure changes. I could tell you, if I close my eye and focus, how high above sea level I am at any given time. And so when we build our tunnels, we do so with gentle slopes and passages, textures on the ground, grades of incline and decline and subtle differences in width um, as well as patternings, which allow us to um, have a good idea of where we are. Our lives are long. It's easy to remember these constructions that we travel frequently and you should see my eyes in the dark. They grow wide like saucer plates and a, a special little gift from the gods allows them to produce just enough light that we can see um, a good 60 feet or so in the dark, depending on the addition. <laughs> huh. So, I guess instead of flat memorizing all of the tunnels, you build them in a way so that, I guess, a certain pattern leads you to where to places you might want to go is that is, did i get that right close enough close enough that's, uh, that's a dwarven thing you wouldn't get yeah, it unless yeah. you lived it but but there are yeah, context I mean, clues and our physiology okay. does allow us to um understand our positioning okay mm. Mm -hmm. 
So all that living underground, you must work a lot with various minerals and metals, even. Yes. Why is what, this? It's your, our specialty. What's your favorite metal? Well, my favorite metal is sulfur, the metal for which I was named. No, I'm talking that, with Ferris. You're talking with Ferris. Iron is my favorite metal for which <laughs> I was named. Rich, hard, malleable. It's pretty yet solid. Oh, it's quite solid. Makes for great weapons, great tools. Uh, you can set your back to iron. It'll back yours. And if you instill it with the spirits of the animals, it becomes even stronger yet. The spirits? I. So, so what? Do you like, like kill the animals over the... You like forge mock, their like bones into the ste into the iron as you, you make it. Greater the beast, crazy. the greater the, the tool. Crazy. Hmm. Very interesting. Mm hmm? Do so you guys have a lot of iron? I thought iron was pretty rare. Oh? Well, maybe no. rare up here, but... Hmm. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, for us, does not. Come huh. Imagine that. Iron common enough that the dwarves name themselves after that. Mm. Must be great. Must be fantastic. It's pretty good. What can I tell you? Yeah. Not Over out here, here banging like... rocks together, make the arrows. The best I've seen is bronze. I think I saw it a few times. Bronze is a lovely metal. Yeah, but that I mean, the way you bronze. talk about iron. Mm -hmm. The way you're talking about iron makes it sound like you've got a lot of it and it's so grand. Aye, we do. Yes, yes, he says, stroking his chest. We do. Well, thank you so much for your time. Man, I kind of want to see some of those tunnels sometime. I don't want to get lost, though. Final time? Well, unfortunately for you, our tunnels are verboten to those not of our kind. You wouldn't... You, you, you break your back trying to walk through them because they're short, sized just for us. Makes them mm. deeply defensive against any possible incursions. Unless the killer gnomes came. <laughs> <laughs> the day the killer gnomes come we'll all be doomed that's for two that's true uh, he'll take us all with him and then some oh speed talking bastards well we've Can't got to go them. off to our, our yeah. political meeting now goodbye everybody and uh, they will depart don't get trapped in there too long they wave. Yep, See you in a decade. Who could hate dwarves? They're so nice. You just had a lovely conversation with dwarves. Yeah. He had a, a, a charisma. He is yeah, unusual has... for a dwarf. That's true. Well, that was just sulfurous. Um, Ferris had nine charisma. Hmm. Perfect. That's I great. also had nine charisma. That's why we got along so great. That's perfect. You got to be at each other's level. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, what I got from that is the dwarves at least claim to have a lot of iron. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Drekus needs that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Lots so of things think, here. So, Sonny, uh, when you're talking with uh, Sulphurus over there, I didn't quite catch what you were saying, but uh, what'd you talk about? I was seeing if he had, um, if they had Mithril here. Because I know that we have a lot of that back in Drekus now. I thought it could be a good bargaining chip. It might be, based on and talking they didn't. with... Yeah, based on talking with Ferris, I think they've they've got, like, actual significant deposits of iron in their mountains. Maybe we could do a trade. Maybe. Maybe, it's just... They also talked about they've got tunnels, but they're all dwarf-sized. Hank, what do you think on this? Do you think we could maybe see? I don't know. 
keep saying Ember's Keep is a shithole. Yeah, but the, no one's really it. been other than this guy, and I'll kind of like point over to the, our uh, buddy who I imagine is like licking the, the window, or the... <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> he's looking over uh, at you with his backwards arm. Yeah, he's yeah. hanging out over there? Yeah, he's Studying... hanging out. I mean... Hmm. Well, at least it's going to be a relatively short trip from Ember's Keep to Uma. And then a river trip up from Uma to Yaka, if, if really Dan's wanted? map is right. Well, yes, you I don't know... know why everyone doesn't want to go to Ember's Keep. They're very nice people. <laughs> <laughs> they look super nice, you know? But I think maybe we just kind of work our way that way. You know, it's kind of a long way. And, you know, once we get yeah. That's kind of why through I don't the mountains go. and start through way. the south... You know, we can go to the ocean in the south and then go east. And then, you know, if there's any bad trouble along the way, we just pop over to Yuma and we go from there, you know? So I think here, we just the bare, At the bare minimum, let's go to here. And I'll point at the map that exists, surely. Yeah. Yeah. I like the uh, the path that was currently drawn. Worst case, we'll go to Uma. Best case, we'll go to Amber's Keep. Yeah. And I mean, there's the jungle is super nice and hospitable. It should be no problem at all. <laughs> Uh -huh. mm. Certainly. Yeah, no, we fine with me. Go wrong. Stay another night, and I think then we can set out. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Sounds perfect. We stay another night. Someone shell out five gold. We can leave the next day, and we're going to go. Oh, no, my up. map's done. Oof. All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll fork over the five. Thank you. Thank you. This is your third night in Solfang. Yep. One, two, three, soul thing. Uh, you will leave on the 17th of December as Velmontarius sets. Um, it's time for the big D100s. Who wants to roll? I'll start. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We want high. Yes. You yes, want we high. Do. That's yeah, high enough. Is decent. I so, uh, wait, you should know we're moving at double speed. We had talked about it during a break. Ah, you want to go, you, or, you want to move at the fast speed. We want to move at the fast speed. We all agreed? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Will, Will's not here, but he said yes yeah. during the break. We all agreed. Perfect. Can we have a token to show where we are roughly on the map? Um, no, I want you to have to be confused and lost. Um, right, I will, right. I will, uh, you know figure out where you are, and then you can all judge where you think you are. True. Right. That's how you're going to do it. Wow. <laughs> wow. So there's this lightning storm outside, everyone, and it's <laughs> roaring and raging. Uh-oh. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know who needs to hear this, but if you think there's a ghost inside of your baby's like monitor, make sure there's not a spider that's hanging in front of it, swinging around, because it'll look Ooh. like a ghost. By the way, just in case anyone was wondering. You want me to roll with you 100 next, or who's rolling next? Um, well, I... Yeah, so hold on. So we're Go ahead, do... Big no. Not that that's what distracted me at all. Eight, but... two, 46. Two incoming. Okay. I've got a 46. First Don't two go. days, you travel the jungle. It's hot. It's sweltering. It's raining. It spends like half the day raining. There's deep fog and cl and low-hanging clouds all over the place. You don't really get good sunshine. You don't see the stars for days on end. The new moon has recently, sorry, the full moon has recently come and passed. Uh, Mr. Mooton, would you roll me a D100? 53. Excellent. Another successful day with Kaz in tow. And Kaz will we bumble reached... along, his great pack full of elven herbs and spices and poultices and healing things to resolve the rashes of the people in Ember's Keep. Uh, you know, waddles behind him. The party can reached... forage as you go. You've got the, the ranger in tow who will get you yeah. all fed. You got to feed yeah. Kaz now, and he's kind of a big boy, but it's fine. It's fine. Um, can I get we a... the bamboo this day? Nope. Oh, okay. So we're slower than I thought probably back there then all right um can um, i get a d100 from hank yes will's um, gonna fuck I'll... it up yeah hell yeah i am you know this but i know this oh That's 59 
Not bad. All right. It's Very going nice. great. We're making good movement. Yeah. By they the end of this are. day, you will enter the bamboo forest. Hey, uh, brother Daniel, make sure you add 100 gold to your character. So, uh, well, no, I'm not. You keep it. No. I'll keep it if you want. Yeah, you keep it. No, Sonny's got too much money already. It'll it's about be the money. It's about the weight. It, it'll be fine. It's about the money. It'll be fine. What? It's not fine. like she's yeah, going to spend 100 it all more. in one place. All right, fine. I'll take it. Take it. All right, doing a little, about 11 miles a day. All right. Can I okay. get a D100 from uh, Woodsy Bill? Woodsy. Yeah. <gasps> yes. Oh, Death. In the bamboo forest where it's, it's nice fine. and safe, right, guys? That could be good. <laughs> we don't know yet. We know it's an encounter, but we don't know if it's good or bad. It might not even be a combat encounter. It could be good. It's bravo. So it he's got to roll again, right? Encounter. That's yeah, another D hundred, right? It's could be a peaceful encounter. It could um, be. Yeah, it's a D one hundred. Okay. Come on. Okay. It's a good number. Yeah, it's fine. Roll me again. Yeah. Oh, come on. <laughs> there you okay, go. Sixty-four. 64. That's good. That's what I rolled the first time. Obviously, it's good. And the. Well, I am in the right table. <laughs> Neil sees ancient dragon. Am I in the right table? It's like, man, is this how I'm actually gonna kill him? I don't know about this. <laughs> Hold on. Let's back it up. It's on, fine. A... As you're moving through the jungle, you are going to stumble across because you're moving at faster speeds right you can move at mm -hmm. normal speeds you can go way faster nope, a lot fast. faster but you you mm -hmm. um have shitty you're, you're more likely to be ambushed uh, and this is yeah. one of those situations where you're hacking your way through the jungle you don't have a machete but you know you're you're cutting through things and moving quickly and kaz is with you and he's like this is not how we travel but you whatever dudes you, you do you um, i'm all along for the ride and who's at the front of the party is it is it woodsy bill Probably me or Woodsy Bill. It yeah, depends I, on what yeah. we're doing. You're walking through the jungle. I don't know, Woodsy Bill, would you rather me at the front or would you be at the front? Either is fine, so fuck it. Coward. If it's uh, one, I'm at front. If it's two, you're in front. Okay. I'm in front. <sighs> Woodsy Bill. So the thing is, the bamboo, comes in lots of different forms, right? It can be tall yeah. bamboo, it can be short bamboo, it can be clumpy, it can be spaced out. We're in a, a you know rugged jungle environment, so there's lots of hills, and then the hills fall away, and there's rocky outcroppings, and there's creeps, uh, creeks, and there's bunching bamboo all over the place. And so you're coming, you know, up this slope a little bit, and you gotta like hack your way through this bamboo, and you're the rest of the party's at the bottom of like this slight hill, and there's like water rolling down it, and you're kind of like having to get through the mud and climb up this thing. When you get to the top and you push your way through the clump of bamboo, standing before you are roll me 2d6. <laughs> roll two? <laughs> just roll two. Yeah, just roll two. That's there are six large armored creatures with these long tails with huge spikes coming off of the sides of them. They're quadrupeds. What are they, what are they, what are they doing? Are they like sitting there They're eating grass? Or what are those? It's I'm just... going to back up. Yeah, I back up slowly. Yeah, yeah. back up quietly. All right, everybody. Ready I'll whisper. Quiet. To going to go around. Crass. What, what are those? Cass. Cass. Uh, Cass, like the rest of you, are, are down the hill and cannot see the creatures. Oh, oh I see. Woodsy Bill, the Woodsy theme, Bill right? has climbed up the, this incline by himself. He's the first one up. And so mm. Woodsy Bill sees these large... Huge? Large? Very, very big... Uh, They're very big. All right, that's that's good enough for now. And yeah, 
Yeah, their size huge. Yeah. Do they appear huge. to have noticed me right away? Oh, I think so. I think um, when you push through the bamboo, one of them has its head turned in your direction. And, you know, it's, it's uh, got eyes on the side of its face. And so it's sort of looking at you in one of the eyes, like, <laughs> stares right at you. It's like little you know, U-shaped uh, pupil. Sure. I'll take a quick moment to look at the rest of them. And they're just sitting there like, lazily munching on grass he said mm -hmm. or some sort of plant mm -hmm. and i'll start slowly backing away mm -hmm. very slowly i'm not making any quick movements just creeping backwards until they are all right well covered by the forest you are a Second edition ranger. Ranger. Yep. And, and I can affect the reaction of animals. Yes. Uh, and this monstrous seeming thing is technically a natural animal. Um, yeah. So I'm going to need you to make me. What, is the, what does the rule say? How do you do your thing? <sighs> Fuck. Grab book. Do they have to make a saving throw of some kind? <laughs> some kind. Well, I opened up to Wizard, so that's close. Is it the animal must large? roll a saving throw it's versus huge. Rod to resist the ranger's overture. Excellent. Rod. Rod. Rod, whatever. <laughs> the ranger imposes a minus one penalty on the die roll for every, every three levels. A roll versus your rod. Uh, mm -hmm. This is a very weird sound being made in the other area. It passes with wild... wild. Hold on. There's a weird noise that I need to go check out. Uh, very well. All right. This gives me enough time to actually read the rule. Okay. Good. Read. Yeah. I, I just read it on the wiki, so you, you read the actual rule. Hi. All right. Rangers are adept with both trained and untamed animals, having a limited degree of animal empathy. If a ranger carefully approaches or tends... Any natural animal, he can try to modify the animal's reaction. Natural animal is one that can be found in the real world. In this case, Neil said this counts as a natural animal. Mm -hmm. Great. Yep. Uh, when dealing with domestic or non-hostile animals, a ranger can approach the animal and befriend it automatically. Ha ha! Yep. He can easily discern the qualities of the creature. Perfect when dealing with a wild animal or an animal trained to attack. Animals roll saving throw versus rods to resist the ranger's overtures. That's why I thought it was wild. Yep. Damn. Well, it does say non-hostile animals. Yeah. Do we ride these triceratops but... to the jungle? Is that what these are? <laughs> yeah. This one. Yeah, these so are no would have a minus two. Yeah, can we just ride the triceratops <laughs> the rest of their way through the jungle? Because that would be amazing. Also, do you think triceratops have any fur on them that I can summon them? So I think that would be hilarious. <laughs> Uh, Austin oh, shit. Is... I needed to approach the creature fearlessly, but that's okay. That's that's a detail Neil doesn't need to remember. Um... You were fearless. You were just yeah. carefully fearless. I just... Yeah, I was calm and collected. And, uh, yeah, and call it Sarah because uh, that's the one from Ram Before Time me. that Neil loved. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Um... It was fine. The answer was it was just a dog making weird noises in its sleep. But weird enough that it needed to be checked yeah. out. Um, yeah, so there's there's no like explicit downside to the Threats. dude passing. I just can't modify it. Right. You're trying to be like, okay, large creature. We're cool, buddy. I'm just going to yeah. walk back here and we're cool. And the large creature just like blinks at you and you're just not familiar with how to calm a beast of this type that you've never seen before. Um, yeah. So yep. like if it was going to be neutral and I'd succeeded, it'd be like whatever right above neutral is so friendly or something. Mm -hmm. Yep. Or as opposed to like it going down one. Yep. And so now I have to roll happen. to see. I'm sure it's going to be neutral. It's I'm be sure fine. it's going to even be friendly. It could be. It could is be. Is it Sarah? 
Oh, it's not. We're about Sarah. to get some mounts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, it it watches you go. You dip behind the tall bamboo, the short bamboo cluster, and um, it doesn't follow you. Perfect. All right, oh, I'll I'll get back down <laughs> to the party. There's some freaky, spiky, big tail beasts up there on top of the mountain or on top of that hill. Well, Rana, hey. did you bring them to us? No, they're just sitting there. I'm pretty sure they're plant eating animals. They aren't going to be hunting oh. us. Oh, uh, Rana. Sure. Okay. It, it wasn't Let's a Rana. Let's just wait for them to move on. Cass, do you know what these around. are? Oh, smart. Uh, I have not seen, so how could I know? <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, let, let's just go around. I figure as long as we don't disturb them, they won't disturb us. Yeah, because they're big. They're size huge, um, and yeah. they've got armored plates on them, so hitting them would look difficult, and they got big spiky tails. Exactly. Which is surely not used for some sort of mating ritual. It's probably how they kill the other things. All right, so, well, um, you can avoid that encounter successfully. It'll delay your day. You'll make less progress, but it'll be fine. Sure. Next up on the encounter it's roll. Than dying. Yes, that's true. Is Daniel. He 100 oh, Excellent. Fantastic. Excellent. Um, where were we here? La, 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 la. I think we're at the crossroads of the mountains now. That's actually very good, cartographer. Um, by the end of this day, you've not only gotten to the crossroad of mountains, where Cass will tell you uh, one's called Arlen, um, and uh -huh. I'll tell you that's the name of the Arlen Range, um, mm. but you'll you'll move and you'll even get out of the bamboo by the end of the day, and you'll spend the day camping somewhere between bamboo and jungle, like right as it's mm. transitioning from one to the other. Can I get a D100 from Hank? No, Sunny is next. Sunny. Good old sunny. It's a Ooh. great Ooh, day. Excellent. We are poking it through the jungle. today compared with episode one. Please. I know. <laughs> Wait a minute. This was... It's gone like 50 miles. Yeah. No? You? This one's you. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is your seventh day of travel that we've made. Uh, so we're doing la la la. Okay, so we are, um, we're following the river. We are following the mm -hmm. Golong River. And next up is indeed, uh, Hank. Ooh, oh, baby. Two. <laughs> baby, baby, baby. Do you mean, it mean that it's a bad one? Yeah, I mean... Yeah, we just see a Brachiosaurus. We need another D100? Sorry, I didn't hear what you said. Uh, Hank will need to roll it. another D100, yes. Get it, Hank. <sighs> that's, not, that's not good. That's fine. It's probably fine. That's not good. 35. Sorry for my... Y'all's loss. <laughs> it's all good. It's not good. No, it's fine. We got out of one. Mm -hmm. We'll get out of another. It may be difficult, but we'll be fine. <laughs> God, I hope we'll be fine. <laughs> It'll be fine. It's good. It's good. Don't even worry about it. Oh, really? Um, okay. Next yeah. Moment. It's great. You're walking along the river. It's fine. Where is the edit page details button over here? It's in the top. Yes. There we go. Perfect. And um, let's just bring our party members over here. We don't need this. It's fine. It's it's a woodsy. No, we don't need a, a battle hank, map. A sunny... We can just keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Someone had to be the person. I'm glad it was me. Glad I could be the one to bring you together. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and everyone's at full HP, I believe. Yeah, well, yep. would be, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Hank, since you rolled all these numbers, would you also roll me a D4 plus two? Oh. Hmm. Roll a one. 
Oh, whoops. It's five. <laughs> five. Now the jungles are filled with noises, always, right? There's the yeah. rain, there's the water flowing, there's the distant sounds and calls of all sorts of creatures, birds, animals, little mammals, reptiles. Every now and then you hear the sound of like a creature being killed in the nearby woods by another creature, but you don't actually get to see it. It's just sort of like a spooky sounding thing. Mm -hmm. um, and, oh, right, we're moving quickly so that we've got uh, penalties on our surprise checks, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, oh, right. One of you roll me a d10 minus two. Who wants to do it? That's going to yeah, bite Hank. Don't go. roll low. You want a three minus or higher two. at the You want a four or higher at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, baby. Give it to me. Hold on. Wait. We might be okay. No, never mind. No. My surprise chest is still zero. Just kidding. Yep. Oh, that um, was a roll of a natural roll of three chat for those listening. Yep. Which has a so we said Not it was fun. um. It's Bill, and then it's Sunny, and then. I'm gonna like, Hank with the mongrel man, and I'm gonna keep him close to me. Almost like a, uh, I don't is, know. Is Daniel in the rear then? I or guess is Daniel so. in the mid? I don't you care. In the mid? One or the other. You pick. It's up to you. I'll be the rear. Okay. 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 Um, so as we're walking through the jungle and we're, we're kind of pushing through things, we get to an area where there seem to be some, that jungle, the, the bamboo, where the paths open up a little bit and there's more of like a trail, which is great because that means easy walking. It also means other things come around here more often than not. Um, and as our dearly beloved party is coming around a corner. Bye. Um... We're just going to come straight to this page as we round, we come through some bamboo and see before us gorillas. Uh. Oh, gorillas bad. being led by a giant gorilla. Um, and these creatures are fresh from a kill because you can see the red blood already on their faces. The, the little bits of meat still stuck on their claws. And they take an immediate <laughs> disliking to you and the first so what uh, you're saying is, is ranger that ability. these are natural animals mm -hmm. maybe but you're all surprised and you've you know mm. stumbled upon them when they're in feeding yeah. mode and so the big one is going to stand there on uh, get up on his hind legs towering you know 12 feet in the air when he's fully Erect with his huge chest out, <laughs> beat his chest, drum it a whole bunch. Um, this little one will run out and do the same thing. This little one will run out, and they're just kind of like beating their chest. But these three will leap to the offensive, not wanting to be outdone by their gorilla brothers. They might not, maybe these are the ones that didn't get enough food. Maybe they're trying to vie for position in society. Gorillas are intelligent creatures, you know? They, they have their own stuff going on. Uh, and so we will roll into combat with three of the gorillas initiating during the prize round. <laughs> they run. It's all over, boys. Yep. Yeah. Oh, it's fine. Just um, We're halfway there. All right. <laughs> all right. The little gorillas get to attack once with each of their fists. So, on starting on your left, Woodsman Bill, uh, ah. a slam with the first fist for five points of damage. A slam with the second fist is a thirteen, is barely a miss. And Sunny, this other gorilla will scamper you have to up swap to me you. and him. Then. Oh, whoops. Sorry. Sorry, my bad. You, no, it's okay. uh, yeah, here we go. Perfect. Um, this one will come up bad. and you know, galloping towards you, running on its knuckles and on its feet. It'll then throw itself in the air and bring down its fists towards you, trying to rip your head off or bash it in. 
uh, with a 17 for four points of damage and a higher roll for eight points of damage. And I forgot this other one down here, Woodsman Bill. This one forgot to make his attacks, but he's going to make a pair of them as well. With a six is no good. And with a 22 for eight points of damage. This is the surprise round. The gorillas are activated and it's initiative time. Ah. Ah. Oops, that was that was an attack. <laughs> These ones we can just click the move button because their initiative modifier is three, but they're not moving. And this one has the big initiative modifier. Would you call these large creatures or small creatures? This one's a large creature. The other ones are medium creatures. Yeah. Should be nice if Mata was here. Mm-hmm. Sure would be. Who needs Mata? Uh, all oh, right. Well, talk this about it at the end of the round. Gorilla is first, and he's he's trying to make Woodsman Bill into Meal Bill, um, and so the fist comes down. Five more points of damage against you, Woodsman Bill, and another fist is a wild miss as you beat the gorilla off with your spear, Sunny. Fifteen. That's a hit. You easily cleave into the for gorilla six. for six points of damage. Ow! Takes points. <laughs> um, do you have any other attacks? No? No more. No, I don't have any fucking other oh, attacks. Oh, Bill. Bill. Uh, well, I'll attack this one that's on my left here. Yeah. Oh, it's a critical Natural hit. 20. Roll me extra damage. Roll me another 2d4 as your spear plunges into the gorilla's body. Uh, damage. Oops, I forgot to take the other five as well. Yeah, with the crit table. <laughs> there we go. Um, these are natural creatures. We definitely need to go check what their morale is so we can input it into the morale formula. Mammal. You are not small. You are not a herd mammal. You are a gorilla. Your morale is average. Okay. Abilities and attributes. Uh, morale. Thank you. And giant gorilla. Your morale. All right. Excellent. And okay. then. Uh, backhand, right? The stab yeah, at the front, butt. and you turn the butt around, and it's another natural 20. Roll me extra damage as the butt of the spear jabs him in the eye. Uh, oh my for God. great damage, Bill. That, this Jesus. is actually good Quarter, damage. Two natural 20s in a row, you gotta throw up the crit <laughs> table for him. All right. Well, he gets yeah. a saving throw versus spell uh, death burst to death. see if he avoids it, and he passes, and it's fine. And he gets the right. second one, and he passes, and it's fine. All right, yeah, cool. Uh, Cass. Um, Cass will hurry over. Back. He's going to heal me. <laughs> he cast he's, gonna spells. he's a healer. He better hide. He will grab himself a big stick, and nice. he will move himself into the bamboo. Yeah. Right. Right. The bamboo. Yep. Uh, this gorilla I'm up to you, Sonny. And he will fist you once with a 19 for nine points of damage and fist you again with something else for 18, eight more points of damage. You are maybe dying. Um, but Hank, good old Hank, good old jump on them from the high ground, Hank. All is right, there a high ground so... for him? There's no high ground. This bamboo. bamboo. This is beautiful. We can use it as a spring. Uh, so. Or maybe you can cast a spell at wild animals. Yeah. You know, you could. Those, those cute, those Porvin's tiny fucking rocks. Yeah, I can throw some <laughs> very cold cubes if they get in the water at them. Uh, that sounds like next round's combat maneuver, because this round you rolled into initiative with your sword. It did, but I don't have anything that's worth it. All right, so here's what we're going to do. So there's more bamboo. Oh, hold on. There's more bamboo over here, right? Oh, yeah. All the green is bamboos. All the green is bamboos. 
Yeah. I believe in the dice. That's what matters, right? Oh my god. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Who knows here's what the what D2 we are means. Gonna do. Here's exactly what Jesus. we're going to do. All right. We're going to take the bamboo right here, all right? And Hank is going to run straight at it. He's going to do his, his 10-foot sprint, okay? I'm going to draw this out for you. He's going to use his 10-foot sprint and come over here and use the bamboo to pull him this way before springing across. And he's going to cut this one's head off. We can't see 100%. what you're drawing until you release it. Okay. Okay. So, so yeah, yeah. Got so, it. this way... Uh huh. Use it to spring this way, and then uh -huh. launch this way. This uh -huh. one's head is not on its body anymore at the end of this. It's gone. So you got a two-handed bastard sword, and so you're uh -huh. gonna run with it in one hand for a moment. You're gonna jump yep. into the bamboo, using it as a spring to toss yeah. yourself over a creature, and yes. then drop down from above with your two-handed bastard sword. Plug yeah, and we're just gonna take its head entirely that makes off. Makes sense. Yeah. Great. I can see it. Yeah, I can see it too, totally. Um, we're going to need a successful tumbling check, I suppose. All right. 27. 27, yeah. That's, that's very good. That's very good. Um, I was going to apply some penalties, but even if it was at minus six, it would still be a success, and I wasn't going to include that much of a penalty. So yeah, you run over there, you bamboo, spring. crouching tiger, hidden dragon, spring yourself over mm -hmm. one monster and drop down onto the other. Go ahead and please make me an attack with a bonus of one for high ground. And I don't know, okay. they can't but see I it coming. So call... I'll say another wanna... oh, two for back attack. Okay, but I want to call shot, cut his head off too. So I'll take the minus four for that. So I'll do it at a minus one. Yeah, but you're not going to cut your, a hit will not cut a head off. Okay. That's, that's not a uh, mechanically we we don't do that okay, um, that's otherwise fine. that's all anyone would ever do is just make shots call shots to cut off heads at minus four um, i mean fine. if he did enough damage to kill it yes yes okay but we, so this we, is at a plus three then fine yeah, i'll take we it contextualize after the fact 16 19 is a great hit you land and you do all the damage which is seven all the seven yeah to this creature okay. the head is firmly lodged on its shoulders disappointing but um, ankle take it and you end up in what square oh, over here this square all right i think it's this square yeah. right i think it's no, that no, square. It's, de it's definitely this square i think that's a long way to land way and to go. then go i, I guess the that, that carries your momentum no. that's fine that's fine yeah okay uh next up is the gorilla just south of woodsman bill Smash into you for six points of damage. God damn, they're rolling so well. Yeah, rolling Smash well. into you for nine points of damage. Oh my Jesus, God. they're rolling so well on their damage output. It's actually, yes. it's actually really good. If you mouse over these, you're rolling a yeah. D6 plus three. And I'm these are good rolls. Very, very aware. I yeah, noticed that right away. It's like fuck. Yeah. Uh, uh, I have seen nothing different from them. The big one will climb onto this rock. Ooh, 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 ooh. His his offspring or his minions or something are taking care of all of this. So he gets on the rock. He beats him chest, his chest some more. Um, and then he is going to pick up a rock from the ground <laughs> and hold it above his head as if he's going to throw it at something. Um, he's chilling. Is he wearing now. a bow tie? He's not wearing a bow tie. Absolutely not. Uh, I him in a conky dong. Yeah. This little piggy has been wounded by your daggers, right? Your swords? Your swords. Um, and Sword. we'll make Sword. a morale check. Uh, 17 is a failure. When wild animals are wounded, they route pretty easily. Uh, and so this one has just, you know, tasted your blade and is done and is going to piece the fuck out. You can use one of your so attacks So the one I crit twice. Past hasn't its morale rolled, also. It's, it hasn't uh, rolled morale check okay. yet. Oh, okay. This okay, turn okay. hasn't come up. Probably miss. Uh, plus two for back attack is still a miss. Yeah. yeah. Yep. But this one woo, 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 runs away as it's been licked by steel, um, leaving us with Daniel. All right. I'll move up here. And uh, mm, that one there might lose morale. So 
the other one might not. So hmm. I'll I'll attack this one here. All right. That one is Double just good. finishing the beating of its chest. It's getting ready. Its fangs are out. Have you ever seen a go- uh have you ever googled the image of a gorilla skull? It's terrifying. They have huge mm-hmm. fucking teeth. Uh yeah, anyway, yeah. the fangs are out. He's ready to bite. Daniel with your dual wielding daggers, I believe. Yeah, sorry. The sheet closed. Oh, yeah, I'm there. Yeah, I know. I had it ready in That's those. a bummer. Yeah, I... I've added a macro above your... If you click on your character, you should have an uh, A dagger that you can just... Yeah, uh, I don't know if that does off. attack or damage. Ah, uh, yes. So one hit. Uh, one hit, the dagger stabs into the gorilla for... So that A dagger one, is it just for attacks, not damage? Uh, mm-hmm. It should do... I'm going to click both. it. I think it does both. Oh, okay. I'm just going to click it. Obviously, yeah. the attacks are already we'll roll. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, look All at right. that. It does great. Four damage. Yeah, Four well, damage to it. the gorilla. Who will now... Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah. Major made your attack. attack. Take its turn. It'll take its damage. It'll do a, a quick little morale check here. Ten is actually a failure. Um, and it's not a huge failure, but also, like, that dagger hurt, and this gorilla is surprised by it. That That's a surprising feeling. And so the gorilla mm. is going to uh, disengage and back off. Like, it doesn't turn and run, but it backs up right. and, like, throws little bits of grass on the ground and in front of itself and makes just a big noise and then postures and beats its chest some. And mm. I don't think there's any second attacks, so I think we all re-roll initiative. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna roll for. Uh... I'm trying not to die here, so it's three for a disengage, yeah. correct? Yes. Yes. Cool. Seven. Excellent. I'm keep it the same. Excellent. Um, sevens are up first. The one who disengaged last round and is sitting over here is surveying the situation, surveying the situation, still not going back in, beating his chest, doesn't like the knife. Bill, you managed to beat out all your enemies. Yeah, so I'm going to disengage. Yeah. Come back here. Perfect. And pull out my bow. That's it. Excellent. Mm. Uh, Cass has his him, stick already in action with it. Um, the big ape. The big ape. is gonna make a perception check. And he's gonna Get drop a ass. rock Kill on him. Cass. He <laughs> hurls the rock at Cass. Damn. Um, <laughs> What the fuck is that damage? Oh my god. He rolled 5d6 plus 6, but three of the 5d6s were 6s, and the other two two were 3s. It's great damage. He completely knocks out Cass. Yeah, Cass is... Knocks him out, or he's fucking dead? Is he like a Uh, pile of bones? He had 26 HP, so he's at negative 4. Not dead. All right. Uh, yeah. Surprising, I knew very it surprisingly, shield. yeah. Um, and then the the gorilla will come down to cast end of his turn. Uh, this one right here in the middle of the party will make a morale check, and these got, they they ain't got no luck. All right, um, hmm. this one's another short pass, so we'll withdraw and throw stuff around and sort okay. of back off. Attack, attack of opportunity. No withdrawing. He's not fleeing and running. Perfect. He's just, just barely failed his morale check. He's just like. Shh, 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 shh. You know, making a scene. Sunny, it's your turn. I see the rock dropped on my friend Cass. Yeah. Someone's got to deal with that. I run up here. Oh my God. Are you kidding? <laughs> I have to get this guy to go away. What do you mean? It's fine. I'm going to I'm gonna hit him and he's going to fuck it. off. Wait. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah. No, no, it's fine. Going to do that. It's fine. Oh. It's fine. Do it, Sunny. <laughs> it's not a minion. It's fine. His okay. HP bar is still red. It's fine. Attack with my arming sword. I get two attacks this round. Nine. Miss. Uh, now we're at the end. End of the round. End of the cool. round. Next gorilla. That's the one that got crit twice. 
Yes. Uh, so this one has a morale a penalty of half HP. Lost 50% of HP is minus four, which is technically a plus four on the die roll because second edition is fun. Um, mm -hmm. So 20. Yeah. Oh, no, it's already included. Sorry. I've already, oh, okay. It's already included in all the rolls. Uh, he rolls very poorly and fails his morale completely and will turn and run, provoking an attack of opportunity from whoever that is standing there. That would be uh, Hank. That's Hank. Yeah. Uh, boop, boop. That's a oh, critical excellent. hit. Uh, roll me another D8 as well. Nine points Fair. will not kill, but the gorilla's gone. It's done for. His days are over. Okay. Going great, Daniel. Daniel. Grab Cass. I, I should have left this fucker. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you were thinking. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, I'll, I'll follow the order and drag Cass away from the combat. Okay. Uh, what's your strength? Uh, it's pretty good. Actually. It's like twelve, right? Twelve. Yeah. Yeah, not a problem. You can drag him out of here. Okay. This gorilla will come right up to Hank. Throw the first fist at your jaw. It's a 18 to hit for four points of damage. Bring the other fist, which is not actually fisted, it's claws now, right for your throat. It's a 10, which is a miss. You can bat him away. It's fine, and you can take your turn, Hank. Okay, Fuck him up. Hank's gotta refill. That's fine. All right, so Hank, we get two attacks. It's right out of the last person, so I'm just gonna throw a ball. Sure, yeah, uh, you and Sunny are both taking your second attacks right now, so. Go ahead and so let's go. Uh, versus small, that's a what? eight. Because we're not swinging from the trees, uh, mm. and that's a twenty-three. That's a critical hit against the gorilla for one six points six. of damage. It's not that great. Um, no. And Sunny, your second attack. Sunny looks the gorilla in the eye. Has oh, a bit of fear. don't do that! Oh no! <laughs> okay. And attacks him with her arming sword for a. 14's a hit. Your sword pierces gorilla flesh. For seven. Does. Okay, now watch this HP bar, everybody. You ready? Yeah. Okay. I thought so. Nah, it's not the worst. All right. It's not good. What's a disengage? It's a three, three? three. initiative? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Initiatives for the party. Okay. It's good. Uh, oops. I keep rolling attacks bad <laughs> wait which one was that <sighs> the giant ape is going at nine mm -hmm. okay we're good then all right this one over here um we're gonna you give this spook <laughs> oh my god <laughs> Uh, These this one wizards, man. will pass his morale check and come back into the battle after having spent two rounds disengaged and mocking his enemies. He sees that his enemies flee before him, so he joins the fray again and throws a fist at Hank. It's an 11, which is a miss. It hits your armor. And another fist is an 11, and you wow. dodge it gracefully. You're so lucky. Sunny, <laughs> staring into the eyes of the gorilla, realizes that this might actually be a bad situation. <laughs> I've fucking bolt it neil <laughs> you stealth you carefully disengage <laughs> yeah i disengage um, daniel you've you've moved uh, cast stabilize. Uh, stabilize cast thank you i think we need cast to leave cast stable fucking... uh gorilla down Gribby. here Might have to, yeah. <laughs> another failure that's a bad failure this gorilla's done cowardly gorillas hank Buddy. I can just... spook on the big gorilla. Oh, the first ones attacked you, missed you, and so it didn't deal any yep. damage, and so it didn't yeah. interrupt your spell. So you're facing the big gorilla. Now I am, spook. yeah. One creature within 30 feet of you. He needs a saving throw versus spell, and it comes out a minuses. penalty of three? Yeah. yeah. Could... Right. He's a fucking random ass gorilla. There's no way you can have a high save. Well, saving throws are based on hit dice. Um, and he's got HP. Yeah. 
Uh, minus three to this roll. Oh, the nine becomes a six. He needed a 10. Fear flashes through the gorilla's eyes. Fear. He sees his greatest, the greatest fear of all. He Was sees- Was Italian plumber? No, exactly. <laughs> but that's better than what I have. Because what I have is that he sees the future of his society building homes and trading metals, and he hates it. And he hates it. <gasps> but the, the Italian plumber is actually much better. I, I should have gone with that. Um, this gorilla right here is going to pass. Nope, that's a fail. And is going to bolt. And the wild creatures can be terrifying, but they're also, unless starved, um, pretty easy to flee and rout. The great gorilla has failed his morale, not his morale check, he's been spooked um, and he runs. He just runs down this path into the jungle. Um, you can hear the loud crashing as he bursts out behind the party uh, and like runs away. Leaving us with Bill with the bow. Bowie Bill. Boyer Bill. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, gonna shoot at this guy. Cause it Bill appears to think that, you know, getting back in the fight's okay. <laughs> mm. Not no, for six not. points of damage. Second attack. Oh, critical hit. Four, oh, cool. two, D6. plus six is eight points of damage. That's that's good damage. Um, this gorilla is going to fail its morale check, and the encounter is over. The animals disband. Not a one of them killed, but all of them wounded. And the great and gorilla... Defeated, has yeah. the fear <laughs> of man in him, the fear of taxes, the fear of bureaucracy, the fear of settling they down be of in taxes. society. Yes, because it takes days and hours on the phone with customer service to pay your taxes, and it's not worth it. Um. Okay. I think where we where we are with three days from Uma. Could be four. Well, party, before we call it a night, Kaz is unconscious. He took a 30 damage rock to his head. He's going to be even smarter now, according to his philosophy on life. Let's see if he, <laughs> uh, you want to see how he rolls? Rolls on his death saves? Well, we're not see gonna... if he, I mean, are you just going to wait time. around for four fucking days for him? Took a lot longer than four days. It's a negative uh, six. So best case scenario, seven days for him to heal back up. Worst case scenario, long time for him to slowly die. What are we going to do with Kaz? We, we throw him on a donkey and we go. You're going to donkey That's what I was talking him. about Uma because that's closer. Yeah, we'll go to Uma. Well, we How many long. donkeys can, can you summon? Pigma? Three. Uh, I can summon one for eight hours at a time, and every day I can make another one. So we can get eight hours of donkey movement a day, is what I'm hearing? Yep. So we're and in we'll, the bamboo bit. Actually, we can get here. like 16 if we really need it. If it seems to be uh, slowing us down, we can uh, we can start double casting it a day. Mm. We're in the bamboo, so we can go over to... We're, Somewhere we're in this bamboo zone... Yeah. <clears throat> Unless something dire has happened and you're in this bamboo zone. Oh, oh whatever. But you're probably the best in this one. thing we can do you're is in this go one. To I've been tracking. South to the coast and then uh, to Uma. Mm -hmm. Yep. Or... Yeah, well, you wouldn't know when to go to the side, right? Your map is shitty. It's not yeah. a map that you can... It's not a good map. I've got a compass. Map. But yeah. Yeah, but your map is bad. So, like, maybe Uma yeah, is yeah. southeast of you, or maybe it's like due east, or maybe it's due south. You know, you... Yeah, mm. the, well, the well, best we way to go without getting. Well, that. we would know if we cross the river, though, right? So we know we've got to be know. at least on the south yeah. side. Yeah, you've so not it's crossed the river. Like, yet. more like that. So we're along the coast. But yeah. Yeah. All right. That's well, that's still, where we that's will. That's two days. Where we'll catch three. up with our party next week on Rise of Drekus Chapter 3. We'll get our XP for the gorillas. Uh, if you about... take a rest, then yes. They're about 15 ah. experience each. That's what we came out to be. <laughs> <laughs> no, Neil's, Neil's generous. 60 XP each. 
Well, so, you, you know. all insisted on getting the higher, higher XP values, and so our gorillas here... Good. Go... What do you mean? You're the one who insisted that you're using the book instead of your calculator. I was just not going to use give XP at all. Um, that was Which my is plan. wild. <laughs> we didn't give any XP for the first session, uh, first chapter of this campaign. We're here for months. Did, I'm sorry. What was she fighting? I just I missed some of it. But did, did she fight anything that's in this jungle? Mercenaries. Okay. Uh, giant ape. Oh, they're called apes, not gorillas. That's why I can't. Find them. Uh... Um, each of the small ones gives a hundred. Mm. And the large one, thirty six hundred. If only, Chancy. Well, actually, you're not oh. too far off. Two thousand nine hundred. That's actually not bad. That's actually Told not you. bad. Not bad at all. Right. But then it gets um, split between four people. Yeah. Yeah. That's I still true. think the ravages should be worth more. Well, they were what fifty each. That makes sense. <laughs> no, it doesn't. They have two attacks. Honestly, the Ravagers were more dangerous than the apes. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. More attacks. Yeah. Yeah, they were disgusting. Like, yep. At that rate, the Ravagers should be like 300 each. Well, what do you mean? Over the 30? And they had really low HP, um, and that's what makes them weaker and have lower uh, experience points. Okay, you can find 200 a... XP. Yeah, 200. yeah, but they don't they don't route like gorillas yeah. will. Hmm. They also can't yeah. do 30 damage on a single attack like gorillas, though. Well, that's one gorilla. That that's was true. the big that's gorilla true. with a fucking rock. With that was a big gorilla that's worth 3,000 experience yeah. apiece. Yeah. 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 All right, well. All, All right. right. Well, that's it, everybody. We will be back next week with more Rise of Drekus. Uh, We didn't talk about what we learned in Solvang, although we sort of talked about it a little bit. Yeah. Um, but we didn't do mm. our whole, like, what did you learn about the area? We'll do that next time. When we get to, okay. to Yuma, we'll, we'll do it all together and we'll catch you then. Anyone have anything to say before we go? Bing bong. Bye -bye. Bing bong.